All right, so we've got a good debate today. Uh, this one's going to be on the existence of Krishna. So it's going to be Jack and Avi versus Siddharth and Arjuna. So uh, Jack and Avi are taking agnostic, Siddharth and Arjuna are taking pro. And um, it's going to center around this argument that was given last time when Jack and I talked to Arjuna. Um, so I'll just post that in general. It reads, premise one, if all claims in the Puranas are true and the Puranas claim that Krishna exists, then Krishna exists. Premise two, all the claims in the Puranas are true. Premise three, the Puranas claim that Krishna exists. Conclusion, therefore Krishna exists. So we're going to just allow it to be free form in here. Uh, we really only do moderation by request in here. So that is to say, I'm not going to pipe in at all unless one of you guys actually requests moderation. So it can reach the level that you're screaming at each other. I'm still going to back out unless someone actually calls for moderation. The only instance I'll come in uncalled for is if there's a technical problem. Uh, for instance, if someone's mic is cutting out or something like this. Uh, so I'll just pin that message there so everyone can refer to the argument. It's pinned in general. And uh, with well, that, I, I, I will I be quiet. I and sorry, with that, I'll, uh, I'll be quiet and I'll, uh, I'll just let you guys progress and talk however, however you wish. Um, yeah, go ahead and debate. Thank you. Okay. First of all, I, I don't think you give an accurate representation of my argument, so I'm sorry that was not the correct presentation. What's your argument? I would like to again put together the uh, present the argument. So the Puranas are. First of all, I want to understand how does it really work. So hold down the key every time I'm speaking continuously, or just push it one time and then leave it. I take it that it's supposed to be that you push the key down and you hold it to talk, but it seems like you might not have push to talk activated and because you have the debate role, you just led into the crucible. Um, but what the way it's supposed to work is you push the push the talk key down and you keep it down. Okay, okay. Okay, let's try. <laughs> so uh, I really appreciate first of all the opportunity which uh, you know and the um, uh, you know the space which uh, Isaac and Jack have provided here, or Isaac has provided here to have a conversation with, with people who are very intelligent and interested in these topics. So thank you for that. And uh, let me reframe my argument. So the argument is like this. One, uh, the step one, uh, we state that the Puranas are an authentic source of knowledge. Step two, uh, since Puranas are an ancient textbooks and their claims are very extraordinary, I mean, our claim that they, uh, our claim that they have, uh, they have information about the world, which is true, is an extraordinary claim. I need to provide an extraordinary evidence to support it. Step three: I present data points from the Puranas, where, uh, you know, I, I provide data points in the Puranas which are extraordinary in nature. And uh, if you may allow, I would like to go briefly about those data points also, just to. Uh, because you know, in, when you make an uh, uh, an extraordinary claim, you need to present extraordinary evidence. It's not that you can make a claim and present any evidence. So suppose tomorrow I were to have a book with me which states, you know, that the Earth is round and the pigs are brown, and then and then say, hey, my book says this, so my book must be true. That won't really work. But I suppose I had a book which gave, you know, quite precise information about, uh, suppose gave like you know the value of pi to like two hundred digits. You know that would be a significant data point. So the both the time, both type of data points are not the same. So I want to also go briefly over the data points which are being discussed in the Puranas on the strength of which I'm claiming that the Puranas are an authentic source of knowledge because it's, an, it's a, a, a very big claim. So what is such evidence? So I discussed three data points last time. Uh, let me see if I think it allows me to share my screen. Well, just before, if I may interject, just before we do that, I just really, if it's not your argument, I want to be clear on what the argument is. Uh, so, sorry, you we, can, you apparently can go... we have a technical problem here. I don't know why, but I guess Arjuna left and now he can't get back in. Um, yeah, because of the okay, because so of the video thing, because we're doing video, unfortunately. Who, whoever the most recent person was to join, just uh, just leave the room. It might be it might be worth just not doing this video. No, um, we're good. Just... He's back. They they wanted video. We can we can do okay. that for them. That's fine. 
Okay, and yeah, no, I, I just went with the formalization from last time, but if it's a different argument uh, now, that's fine. I'll, uh, yeah. you guys can continue. But, but if it's a different argument, we've I'd got, like to... We've got Arjuna back now, so we'll just, well, let's let Siddharth just continue. Well, I'm just, well, if it's a different argument, I'd like to for have it formalized before we, like, start going into support of any individual premise. Yeah, please, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, I'm, I'm not so well-versed in the fields of, you know, uh, this logical argumentation. I'm mostly, you know, been trained in science. And uh, so I would like to know from you, uh, and, uh, you know, where did I, you know, leave some gaps? And I would like, I'm happy to fill in the gaps or to okay. help you better understand my argument. So the first thing I heard you say is that the Puranas are an authentic source of knowledge. And I take it to be the second thing you were trying to say is that the Puranas predictions that have been proven true are extraordinary. And that's, uh, is that an, are those two premises that would be accurate representations of the premises you mentioned? Um, Siddharth? Are you, are you there? No, see if you internet problems. Yes. Okay. So the, I took it to be that the two premises that you mentioned are premise one, the Puranas are an authentic source of knowledge. Premise two, the Puranas predictions that have been proven true are extraordinary. Are, are, yes. Is that an accurate represent? Okay. Okay. And now do you have a third premise or is there a conclusion? Since the Puranas also state that these activities or these events, uh, the predictions which, which I'm going to discuss, they are uh, connected with the gods. They must be real personalities too. Okay. Um, so premise three is, I take it to be, if the Puranas, is it if the Puranas are an authentic source of knowledge and if the Puranas predictions have been proven to are extraordinary, um, I'm just not clear on what the third premise is, or do, or is it in a conclusion that you're trying to show? Like, let's well, let's just get clarity first. Like, is there another premise in your argument, or is there a conclusion to your argument right now? So that's an implication, not necessarily a conclusion from the first. Oh, two. okay. So it's an implicated premise. Okay. So if if what if the piranhas, or sorry, just you tell me what the what the implication is. The implication is that uh, the Pura the the demigods or the gods which are stated in in the Puranas are real personalities, and those personalities are said in the Puranas to be the source of those events, and those events are connected with these predictions. Those predictions have been found to be true. So, like since the first two have been est uh, established, the third implication comes that other things which are stated in the Puranas must be true also, and that one of those things is they're being gods okay so wait wait so so premise one the piranhas are an authentic source of knowledge premise two the piranhas predictions that have been proven true are extraordinary premise three the demigods in the piranhas are real personalities and premise four is that so is there more to the third premise or is the rest of a fourth premise no that that's it okay so premise so premise one, the Puranas are an authentic source of knowledge. Premise two, the Puranas predictions that have been proven true are extraordinary. And premise three, the demigods in the Puranas are real personalities. All right, is there is there another premise in this argument or is there a conclusion? <clears throat> uh, no, since I'm not so much familiar with this language, I'd like to ask you a question here. So usually when I, when I usually suppose, uh, you know, try to present uh, you know, an argument in a say in a scholarly paper. First, we'll present a theory. You know, here this this is the model, and then after presenting the model, we'll present evidence that you know why this model, like what are the predictions coming out of this model, and then we will uh, if the predictions match with the observation, then you will say okay, this model is accepted. So, for example, uh, I mean, I'm not sure. Have you seen? Have you heard read about uh, Einstein's general theory of relativity? Sure. So, in Einstein's general theory of relativity, the model includes that there is there are, the, the gravity so the i'm not sure the first thing is the gravity is a uh, is a function or is a phenomena coming out of space time distortion then based on 
uh, that uh, you know that model, he he made some predictions, and those predictions came out true. You know, in uh, in an amazing manner. In 1929, if I'm not really sure, if you know, in 1929, Sir Arthur Eddington was able to see very minute and but very precise uh, deviation in a uh, light coming from a, from a further away star, which was observed during an eclipse. And because it was such an extraordinary prediction, which came out to match with uh, observation, which came out to match with the prediction from the general theory of relativity, the model was accepted. So then, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to frame my presentation in a similar manner that in my model, there are uh, the Puranas are stating that there are gods. Pur Puranas are presenting the model. They're presenting, they're presenting like a paper. In that paper, they have some predictions. And those predictions have been found to match with the observations. So then I'm asking uh, people to accept Puranas as uh, an authentic model of the, you know, our reality. Okay, I'm going to try to formalize that. And you tell me if, um, you tell me if I'm, um, misrepresenting your argument or not. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So if all the predictions to date of the Puranas, Puranas have been shown, have been proven to be true, then we have reason to believe the remaining predictions are true. And then premise two, all of the predictions to date of the Puranas have been proven to be true. Okay. Proven to be true, conclusion. We have reason to believe the remaining predictions are true, or we can say the reason the remaining predictions are true. And then, and then obviously one of the predictions, one of the remaining predictions or, or one of the remaining um, predictions or statements is that Krishna exists. And then it's all of the things in the products are true, then Krishna exists. Um, I think, I think that, that that's pretty good. I, I so like that how you, how you put it. I'll just but read I, it like this. You tell me if I'm missing anything. So I have premise one. If all the predictions to date of the Puranas have been proven to be true, then we have reason to believe that the remaining predictions are true. Premise two, uh, sorry, all the, pro, all the predictions. Premise two is all the predictions to date of the Puranas have been proven to be true. Uh, conclusion, we have reason to believe the remaining predictions are true. Is, is that an accurate representation or is, am I missing something? I think that's pretty good, but I have a follow-up question, as I said earlier, that how would you frame Einstein's general theory of relativity if I were to tell you that his model, first of all, required uh, people to accept that gravity is a transformation of space and time. And then based upon that, he made some predictions regarding you know, the uh, deflection of light coming from faraway stars. And later, those predictions were found to match, the, uh, the observations were found to match the uh, predictions from general theory of relativity. And from that, that point onwards, since then, people have accepted that gravity is actually a transformation of space and time. So how would you put his model or his theory, general theory of relativity, in similar you know, setup as you're yeah, putting my... I, I, yeah, I can, I, can, I, can, I can actually, I can do that for you. Um, so, so I can do that right now. So I, the way I would say that is, um, if all the predictions entailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity, um, have been proven to be true, um, and so, and, and the remaining The remaining predictions are from the same data generating process. Then we have reason to believe that.
that the remaining the remaining predictions entailed by Einstein theory of general relativity are true are true and then premise two would be um, all the predictions sailed by gen, uh, Einstein theory of general relativity have been proven to be true. And premise three, premise three. By the way, if T Jump is watching this, this is what he, this is what I'm doing that he was asking me to do in the first place. Okay. Um, premise three. Um, uh, the, I didn't get the reference to T Jump here. <laughs> Oh no, no no it's fine it's fine he's like he's just a gibberish generator you don't 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 worry about him um, okay and the remaining the remaining predictions are from the same generating pro data generating process as as the initial predictions as the initial okay. So here's how I would frame Einstein's theory of general relativity. And so I'm posting it, the argument now. So premise one would be, if all the predictions entailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity uh, have proven to be true, and the remaining predictions are from the same data generating process as the initial predictions, then we have reason to believe that the remaining predictions entailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity are true. Premise two, all the predictions detailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity have proven to be true. Premise three, the remaining predictions are from the same gen data generating process as the initial predictions. Conclusion, we have reason to believe that the remaining um, predictions entailed, we have reason to believe that the remaining predictions entailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity are true. So that's, I just edited it to make that clear. All right, so that's how I would formalize Einstein's theory of general relativity where you have a um, theory, the theory, it's clear how the theory uh, predicts, makes its predictions, or at least it's clear that you could uh, draw the entailments of the, the of what the theory would predict. To date, you have uh, in provided to date that you have uh, a good sample set of theories that of, of predictions that have been true, uh, and uh, provided that the remaining theories um, are um, from the same data generating process. Uh, then we, then I would say we we can make an argument that we have reason to believe the remaining predictions tailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity are true. There may be other ways oh. to do it, um, but but this would be one way. Um, there is there's another way to do it, but this this is one this is would be the so there's an abductive way to do it and an inductive way to do it. This this right here would be the inductive, would be an inductive way to do it. So, to form to yeah. deductively formalize an in, in induction an in inductive way. I, mean, I really appreciate your doing that. However, I think there's a couple of things I would like to add to this. First of all, in, in the premise two, I would like to add, you would like to add the phrase to date because, you know, there are, there are predictions which have matched up till now, but, you know, you never know in the future, there may be other predictions which may not match from theory of general relativity. In fact, there are some issues with theory of general relativity which other proposed theories, you know, uh, you know hope to solve in future. So I, I would put it to date. In, in premise yeah, 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 that's fine. I, I just did that. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so and then uh, another right. thing would be that this does this does not really differentiate it from other theories. So, like, suppose somebody were to compare it to uh, Newton's theory, and uh, you know, for gravity again, and so uh, somehow other we have to also include in, in part of these premises a feature which uh, which brings the point out that how Einstein's theory of relativity's predictions are you know some kind of you know better, you know, are, are better than the, you know, than, than the predictions which are made by Newton's theory, because it's not that they, they always match precisely, like, you know, 100%, they always have some kind of, you know, er error margin there. So somehow that we have to include that also, otherwise somebody may come up with some other theory. Depend, it also sure, depends. Sure, sure. Yeah, this is for simplistic purposes. Yeah, I mean, look, this, we, we can always keep tweaking it. Um, but you, I think you get the general idea here. So what I'm trying to do is, Let's take so so it's clear how we can do this, or at least it seems clear that we can make a, this type of formalized argument in the case of Einstein's theory of general relativity. Um, now, what 
what I want to see is the same type of formalization for the piranhas. So I can, and I can help do that. I can try to formalize it for you, but, um, the re and I was, and so we started doing that and, and you asked me if I, well, can I do this in terms of the theory of relativity? Um, I think it's clear at this point that we can do that. And here's the way we're doing that. Now we can tweak it. There may be ways of, you know, needing to tweak in any formalization, but it, I mean, have I, have I done this to your, you know, satisfaction? Um, or is there like, or are you not convinced that like formalizing Einstein's theory of relativity is like an unfair, like asking for that would be some sort of unfair move? No, no. I, I think I think you have you have done a good job. So I, I okay. The, the, but just before that, just before Einstein's formulation, the formulation which you did for my uh, presentation was I think uh, was good enough. However, one thing which is missing, and I'm repeating again, is that in in this in this in this uh, presentation. One thing we're not realizing is the magnitude of predictions, and that is an important feature of any of such proposition because it's a magnitude of prediction which gives a weight to you know one model over the other. If the predictions okay. made by one of them is you know of some something very ordinary nature, then that does not really hold. So suppose somebody were to come up with the, with, the, with the another you know presentation for for like say Bible, and they would say Bible says Earth is round. Does that mean everything in in the Bible is correct? Now, this kind of model which we have won't be able to differentiate between these two competing models. So, some of them we have. So, to in have. other words, the predictions are extraordinary. Yeah, the prediction have to be. Okay, we can. You know, we, yep, we can add that. We can add that as a as a as. So, I can add that to both the implication and another premise. That's fine. So, we can say if all the predictions entailed by uh, Einstein theory of general relativity's date have been proven to be true, uh, and uh, all and the and. Einstein's theory of general relativity. Um, Einstein's theory of general relativity has uh, produced extraordinary, extraordinary predictions that have extraordinary true predictions, and the remaining predictions are from the same data generating process as the initial prediction, then we have reason to believe the remaining predictions entailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity are true. Premise two, all the predictions entailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity today have been proven to be true. Premise three, um, in this case, premise three would be um, Einstein's theory of general relativity has produced extraordinary true predictions. So premise three would be that. And then premise four would be the remaining predictions from the, are from the same data generating process as the initial predictions. Conclusion, we have reason to believe the remaining predictions by Einstein's theory of general relativity are true. Okay, so that's the argument. So now we can do, can we put, do the same thing with the piranhas, right? So, so with the piranhas, let me make, uh, so we can just switch Einstein's theory of general relativity with the piranhas. So if all the claims entailed by the piranhas to date have been proven to be true, and uh, the piranhas have produced extraordinary true predictions, and the remaining predictions are from the same data generating process as the initial predictions, then we have reason to believe that the remaining predictions entailed by the piranhas are true. Premise two, all the predictions entailed by the piranhas to date have been proven to be true. Premise three, the piranhas have produced extraordinary true predictions. Premise four, the remaining predictions are from the same data generating process as the initial predictions. Uh, conclusion, we have reason to believe the remaining predictions entailed by Einstein's theory of general, uh, sorry, by the piranhas are true. Uh, the piranhas are true. Okay. Would that be an accurate representation? Is that right? So all I did here was just switch out Einstein's theory of general relativity with the piranhas. Uh, can you hear me? Is, are you there, Sarat? Can you can you hear me? Yeah. No, you're you're kind of roboting a bit. Um, Okay, that's pretty good.
I'm trying to understand how to see my screen, the body, at the same time see the, you know, the. Siddharth, I can't really, I can't really make out what you're saying. I, I think you're in, it may be something with your internet connection. Can you hear me right now? Uh, that was a bit better. You still a little bit choppy, but I, I, I was able to make that out. Yeah, you, you did a good. I think you did a good job in presenting the, uh, formalizing the argument. Okay. Okay. Um, um, one thing I actually will tweak is the remaining predictions uh, are actually entailed by the theory. Um, but okay, we we can. I mean, so one point I I push back on. Um, Okay, so one thing is, um, and this is important, is that the remaining predictions are from the same data generating uh, process as the initial predictions. Um, so we can go over what we mean by that. So, so you can have, for example, you can have a like machine. Let's say you, let me, let me just give you a, a situation here, uh, just as a question. Um, you can have a well. Let me just before I presume that you you don't understand it because you may understand it. Do you do you understand why premise four is there? The remaining predictions are from the same data generating process as the initial predictions. Yeah, that's very important. Otherwise, you know, you have say in Einstein's statement that there are flying uh, spaghetti monsters. That won't really work if, if that was a part, statement part of the whole theory because it's not really part of the same data generating process. Right. So in other words, like if Einstein's, I mean, I didn't hear everything you said there, but the I, the, I take it that you understand the idea is that if Einstein's theory of general relativity just predicted that there's going to be flying monkeys tomorrow, we wouldn't have reason to believe that for two accounts. Um, number one, we wouldn't have an abductive reason to believe it because it's not clear how that's um, entailed by Einstein's theory of relativity itself. But number two, we wouldn't have an inductive account either because it's not clear that we have target validity for any cross-domain induction. So even if we, even if um, we had um, a whole bunch of theory uh, predictions that were being true, um, if the prediction, if the next prediction is completely out of the data set of the first predictions, if it's not what we would have expected if we sampled it randomly, um, if it's not, um, if there's some feature of that prediction that is non-analogous to the uh, individual predictions that we that the theory has been predicting right, we wouldn't really even be able to make, it wouldn't be clear at least how we can make an inductive case for it. So that premise that's important because the remaining predictions are from the same data generating process with respect to what we want to infer from it, that gives us the ability to make that cross domain induction. So. Yeah, it's, very, it's yeah. very important. I'm not sure if you heard me, but I said, I suppose Einstein's theory of relativity had a statement somewhere in an appendix which said there are flying spaghetti mounted monsters that won't really qualify because it's not really part of the same, you know, as you said, data generated process of the same model. But it does have features like space time contortion, which are unfalsifiable. So uh, there can be elements to the, to the model which are uh, not empirically verifiable by, you know, by, as you can say, instruments which we currently have. Okay. So, so here's the, well, that's a different point, but here, but here's the, the thing. Um, the thing is for, so for me, it's not clear because it seems to be, so I, I'll tell you what, there's a couple of things not clear. So one thing that's not clear to me is how, is how P4 is true. We can grant, like, even if we grant the other premises to be true, it's not clear how in the case of the Puranas that, uh, sorry, that P3, uh, wait, wait, uh, oh, yeah, the P4 is true. It's not clear that the remaining predictions are from the same data generating process as the initial prediction. So for example, or at least I can say that all the remaining predictions are from the same data generating process as the initial predictions. So, and I'll tell you why, because the reason why is there's a, an additional feature of one of the remaining predictions, at least one of the remaining uh, predictions that is not present, um, that feature is not present in the previous remaining predictions, that in the previous predictions that have been true to date. And, that feature is the natural supernatural distinction. So all of the, I take it to be that it, at least all of the predictions of the Puranas that at least I could verify uh, or that you can show to me that I could grant that are true, I take those to be predictions about the natural world. 
Um, but it's not, but the, the claim, the, the statement that um, Krishna exists, that's a claim. I take that to be a claim about the supernatural world. Um, no, no, that's incorrect. And uh, first of all, let me define what is supernatural. I don't claim anything to be supernatural. I'm, I, I think Krishna is as natural as anything else, as natural as, you know, something like space time contortion. So first mm -hmm. of all, can you, explain, can you provide a definition for what is supernatural? Oh, I just take that to be, I just take that to be uh, not of the natural world. I, and by natural, I just mean um, the things that are studied by um, uh, the, the type of things that are studied by science, the type of things that are studied uh, by the natural sciences, that is to say, without the risk of forming a circular definition. Um, so if, if you consider, well, that's fine. I mean, if you consider Krishna to be part of the natural world, there's still another a feature. Um, uh, the feature, I take Krishna to be a god on your view. Is that is that right? Yeah, he's a, he's a god. Okay, well, well, here's the other thing then. I mean, the the other thing, the the unique feature about this statement that's um, different from the other predictions is that um, Krishna. It, it, this is a prediction about a god, um, and it's not clear to me that that's part of the same data generating process as the other predictions, even if they came true. So. The, the issue is we're, we're dealing with a cross-domain induction here. Um, so when we have a, a theory that's generating predictions, so let's say I, I'm, I'll just give for the, anyone listening, I'll just make the easy analogy here. So let's say we have this like um, machine and the machine is predicting uh, what time of day um, the sun will rise. And day after day, lo and behold, it predicts that the sun will rise every single day, 100 days, it's, and it's dead on. And then the machine on the 101th day says that the winning lottery numbers are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, do we believe that the winning lottery numbers are actually going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 simply because this machine predicted 100 predictions that were true? And the answer is no. Um, even if the machine predicted... Um, more than that, even if there was like a, a, a very, um, a very fantastic prediction that was made, even if this was made when no other theory could ever do this, even if it was like a extraordinary thing to do at that time to predict what time of day the sun will rise, even if we were randomly put on a planet with a sun and the machine was still able to predict right off the bat, what time the sun will rise, even if it were able to do these extraordinary things. Um, that our other computers weren't able to do, it still wouldn't, it's still not clear that it would give us reason to believe that the winning lottery numbers would indeed be one, two, three, four, five, six. And there, there's a, the reason is it's because that there's just a different feature for, of the data set that we have from the data set we're trying to make the inductive extrapolation to. And in the case of predictions about, about non-gods, which are in the Puranas, and even if all the predictions of non-gods are true have been i've been shown to be true and even if they are extraordinary it's still not clear that we can make the inductive jump to predictions about gods um because it's just not clear that that's part of the same data generating process as the predictions about non-gods so if there's an argument that the the data involving gods and non-gods stem the data is generated from the same data generating process, then we would be able to make that type of cross-domain induction. But if there isn't, it's just not clear to me why we could make such a cross-domain induction. So, uh, first of all, uh, should I refer, call you as Avi? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's it's Avi. Yeah, okay. thank you. So, Avi, I really appreciate that you took so much time to uh, phrase my frame my argument there in a very nice and comprehensive manner. I'm not sure what language was that, but uh, I will say it's a language of logic and philosophy. I'm not trained in that. Oh, this, so will, this will be propositional. Yeah, this is just propositional logic. Yeah, so I really appreciate you doing that. And uh, I can see your concern. And that is why I was saying that, uh, uh, you know, I would like to present my data because then that's what really makes it clear that why, I, why I'm saying that, uh, that God must be there because you're asking a really good question. You're asking, you know, uh, 
is, is the prediction about God, is that coming from the same data gener generating process? Because as you said, you give an example of a clock, which, you know, predicts uh, the, you know, rising of the sun, and then it also gives a lottery number, you know, it's, it's two separate processes, not necessarily connected to each other. So then there is a, you know, issue with it. But let us look at the data, which, uh, you know, which I wanted to present. And, uh, okay, so, and just and just to be clear, you, you you think so? You take it to be that when you present the data, it'll be clear that the uh, data set of uh, whether there is a god or is not a god, or whether the god is Krishna or not Krishna, will be part of the same, or at least there'll be an argument to make that it is part of the same data generating process as the other data sets that have been uh, that propositions have been mentioned upon by the Puranas. Is that that's correct? Right. That's right. Oh, okay. In fact, okay. In fact, they are part the. Uh, I'm not first of all. I'm not necessarily claiming that the God is Krishna. I'm just saying there is a God and he is referred to as Krishna. We won't really. Be, I, I won't really be able to prove that the God's name is Krishna because you know it's a name. It's not necessarily. You know, people can fight over that thing. But we're just talking about about a creator God, a, a God who is who is the the cause of you know. Of the, of the material world. So what does what, okay. what do Puranas, so what so do to be clear then 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 you would then what you you take you 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 think you would have an argument to to put forward such that um, so a supporting argument for premise for them then the that the the proposition the, the sorry the the data of whether there um, is a god whether the proposition of whether there is a god or is not a god that stems from the same data generating process. Or the the these uh, these propositions stem from the same this data about the world that we could we could presumably know that that's that data stems from the same data generating process as the data that is spoken about by the predictions that have come true um, to date in the Puranas. That's right. That's correct. Okay, I'd like yeah. So I would like to hear an argument for that. So what, what the the supporting argument for P four, which is the remaining predictions. Uh, are from the same data generating process as the initial predictions. Okay. That's right. That's right. Or at least all, that their, why, all the remaining predictions. I will I'll say and that. that. And that is why we like to go over the predictions because then if you if I if I explain those predictions, then you will have a better understanding of what kind of predictions I'm talking about and how did they come from the Puranas. And by understanding the process, you have a better understanding of the uh, you know my argument for P four. Okay. So uh, there are basically. Ah, uh, you you just got out, Siddharth. Sorry, another thing I want to uh, is just holding the key. I'm getting getting used to it. So another thing I want to really appreciate you is uh, for uh, you know uh, for having your video on. Even though I also wanted to have it on, but some of my internet is sketchy right now, and I'm not able to show my video. So I appreciate that you have your video on in this uh, debate. Thank you. And uh, so I'd like to discuss three data points. The first is from the Puranas. It's from the from a pralaya. Pralaya is basically a destruction. There are basically many destructions discussed in the Puranas. However, the biggest destruction which is discussed in the Puranas is uh, 251.9 million years ago when one of the kings... So according to the Puranas, there are these uh, gods which are ruling over the earthly planet or they're managing the affairs of our solar system. And they get replaced every uh, 600 million years. And one such shifting happened 251.9 million years ago and according to the Puranas, that was the biggest uh, destruction you know on in the on the earthly planet so that corresponds you know the, the description which is given in the Puranas matches uh, very closely with the description for the earth's greatest mass extinction known as you know end permanent mass extinction so, so sorry to inter interject. So, so just to be clear on what the prediction um, was, is the is the prediction two hundred and uh, uh, two hundred and fifty one point uh, point nine million years ago, uh, gods were replaced and there were destructions. Is is that the prediction? Siddharth, uh, it was a it was a prediction of mass extinction. Okay, so the prediction is two hundred fifty-one point nine million years ago. There has been mass distinction, mass extinction. Yeah. Okay, so just so prediction one. I think to, 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 to be accurate, two hundred fifty-one point one five two. I messed up the number. Two hundred 
251.152 million years ago. So, okay, 251.152 million years ago, there has been mass extinction, extinction on the Earth. On the Earth. Okay. And okay. this, so this happened. One. This hap This happened because the gods uh, were switched. They get switched every 600 million years. Oh, okay. So that's not the first. That's not the end of the prediction. So the so. The prediction, so, so, well, that, that so, seems like not a prediction. That seems like an explanation, right, to the no, prediction? Yeah, but what I'm saying is that it, it is not that, that, the, if, that the dates are given in the Puranas or the predictions are made in the Puranas separately apart from the description. So the Puranas are basically history of the earth. And they're giving the accounts that, that 251.152 million years ago, this event happened. These gods were switched. And because they were switched, there was this mass extinction. And this switching happens okay, every but wait. But, but Siddharth, like, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to to disentangle a prediction from an explanation for why that prediction is, is going to be there. So is it so I understand how so I'm clear about two hundred and fifty one point one five two million years ago there have been mass extinctions on Earth. Now, if the piranhas also say, or if there are texts that say, the reason for this to happen, that ha it happened is that there have been, there was a switch of the, the guard or whatever, the switch, switch of gods. That That is a, I, I don't see how that would be a prediction. Um, so, I take it to be that that would be an explanation. I would, I, I would say both of, both of them are not, not predictions. Both of them are just statements. They're, they're, they're his, the piranhas are ancient historical accounts. Now, would you call ancient historical accounts as predictions? Not necessarily. These books have, you know, are giving ancient historical account, and they're saying that 251.152 million years ago, there was a switch of gods, and at that time, there was a mass extinction. So this is a, a statement okay. given in the Puranas. Okay, so I have statement one. Statement one, 251 or 152 million years ago, there has been a mass extinction on Earth due to due to a change in gods. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there another now is there another statement that you want yeah, to add? It, yeah, statement number two. Uh four point five six three billion years ago. Brahma began the construction of the solar system, beginning with sun. Brahma is also a god. Okay, so statement two is 4.563 billion years ago, Brahma began the construction of the solar system, beginning with the sun. Okay, is there another statement? Yeah, statement number three. Uh, Thirteen point eight zero one billion years ago, uh, Prakriti, another god, caused. Wait, how do I spell that? Frak oh, you can just mention God. Just say God for now. Simple. Is my sound working? Right? Gods, Switch devices. You know, uh, began the universe. Can you guys hear me? All right. Is it okay if I use God for Brahma as well? Yes, you can use God. You can use God for Brahma as well. There are, there are different categories of gods. These are more... Okay, so I'll just use a God. Okay, so statement. Okay, so statement. Okay, so I have these. Statement one, uh, 251.152 million years ago, there's been a mass extinction on Earth due to a change in gods. Statement two, 4.563 billion years ago, a God began the construction of the solar system beginning with the sun. Statement three, 13.801 uh, billion years ago, a god began the universe. Okay. Is that is that accurate so far? Yeah, that's pretty good. And uh, uh, so with these three, just I wanted to make the case that, uh, you know, an argument for P4, as you were asking me, that if the uh, prediction about God is coming from the same data generating process, so I wanted to show you how the Puranas are giving the information about significant events in the history of earth and the universe those those uh, de details are uh, are you know are not just given as a separate facts but are entangled along with the historical accounts of gods 
Well, well, here's the thing, Siddharth. So I'm looking at all of these statements, and I'm not. I'm just not clear that these are even the statements that we've confirmed to be true. Um, so I, I can tell you that I agree. I agree that there were mass extinction events, but this statement doesn't just end there. It says that it was due to a change in gods. 4.563 billion years ago, a god began the construction of the solar system, beginning with the Earth. 13.801 billion years ago. God began the universe. So these, I don't see these as statements. Like I, t I take it to be that the we're we're making, the, we're trying to make the case that the predictions to date that have been true are stemming from the same data we're generating process as the remaining predictions. Now, we're, what I'm looking for are statements from the Puranas that um, we ha can confirm are true. Now, if you take statement one, if statement one was just 251 or so million years ago, there's been a mass extinction on Earth. Like, I can agree with that. Um, but if you say there's been a mass extinction on Earth due to the change in gods, I actually don't know if it's due to change in gods or not. I don't I don't know if that's even confirmed to be true yet. Um, so what I'm looking you for... You guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I just so, switched, to, um, switched devices um, and I wanted I to mean, check. I accept that... Uh, that you are, I mean, I see that you are accepting here that they're coming from the same data generating process, but you have issues with the with the with the, with the, with the statement that, uh, or with the description that the mass extinction happened due to the switching of gods. That is something which you have problem with. But well, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure that they're from the same uh, data generating process. What what I'm just saying is, well, that that would there would need to be an. I'm I'm agnostic on that because I'm an agnostic on what the what the uh, predictions that have been shown to be true are and how and how uh, it can be shown that the predictions that have been shown are to be true are from the same data generating process as the remaining predictions, namely that there is a God, right? So that's uh, really the conclusion really should be, the argument should be that there is a God. I take it to be that's what you're trying to show. Um, no, I think you, you're mixing two points together. One point is that, as we were discussing, that are these prediction which I'm sharing with you are those coming from the same data generating process as the prediction or the statement that there are gods and I just showed you okay. with the explanation that that's the case now if you have issues with the explanation that these events happen due to gods that is something I can understand and we can discuss that well, well not we just not exactly that. Siddharth so so the issue I'm the issue I'm having is that um I'm having an issue seeing how the predictions that we have already confirmed to be true are from the same data generating process as the prediction or statement that there is a uh, at least a one god or, or maybe multiple gods so what i what i'm looking for siddharth i'm looking for um i'm looking for predictions that we have already confirmed to be true i'm looking for that data set now if by, but everything you've presented me for that data set doesn't seem to fall into that data set because I'm not sure that those have been confirmed to be true. Okay. Okay. So let me, let, let's step back because I'm glad that we okay. did the answer sort of general relativity earlier so that I can give an example which you can understand better why I'm, why I'm presenting it this way. So in the case of Einstein theory of general relativity, you know, uh, the, the model begins with the proposition that there are space and time contortions, and that is why we have gravity. Gravity is basically a contortion of space and time. Now, the, that contortion cannot be seen by our human eyes. Based upon that space and time contortion, we have some predictions which are testable, which are falsifiable, and those predictions are tested in a laboratory. Uh, so, uh, you know, they are connected with each other. For, for the first part, for the, uh, you know, that gravity being a space-time contortion, that's not something which can be really observed. Similarly, your point here that really we cannot observe gods causing the mass extinction, and therefore, the, uh, you know, this, these two things are not from the same data generating process is not uh, a very logical well, just, statement. That's not, that's not my, that's not, that's a misrepresentation. So, so that's not what I, I didn't say they're not from the same data generating process. And I'm not even saying they're not from the same data generating process because we can't observe them. So um, you I'm just saying it's not clear. 
accept the definition. I'm, I'm not accepting it either. I'm, I'm agnostic. I'm not, it's not clear to me. It's not clear to me how the, the data set of propositions from the Puranas that have been shown to be true are from the same data generating process as this, the uh, yet to be shown true proposition of the Purana uh, that uh, God exists. So I, I just, I would like an argument. What I'm asking for you really is just an argument for P4. So on P P4, the remaining predictions are from the same data generating process, the initial predictions. I, I would just like an argument that has that conclusion. Now you tried okay, to, uh, yeah, sure. Let, let me ask it, let me ask you the other way. In the case of Einstein's theory of general relativity, how would you establish that, uh, that gravity being a space-time contortion is coming from the same data generating process as the predictions made by that theory? Yeah. So, so you could take a set, a data set of the, um, of a, a proposition with respect to the um, outputs of that theory. You can say, okay, what you, what ratio ha has this characteristic or, or not? And then um, you can take the you can take the same uh, data set of uh, outputs of another domain from the theory, and you can see if they have the same. Uh, you can see if they would take on the same ratio. Uh, now you, that's abstract. You can put that into various concrete examples. Um, so essentially, you you would be able. Uh, one way to do it is to actually test it. So, for example, uh, this I don't. It's I'm not. Um, hundred percent sure how to um, how to do it in Einstein's theory of relativity. I could think about that and give you more concrete examples of how to do it. That's a broad, abstract way to do it. There are easier theories that I could do this with, though. Um, you, so you can take, you can take another theory, but that theory has to have an, a, a part of it which is unfalsifiable. And so pick up any of the, any of the modern physics theories. There's so many of the theories. There's string theory. There's M theory. Well, well, I can, give you, I can give you a really simple one. Um, yeah, but, sure. But, but I, that example, just... the example should have a, a part of it which is unfalsifiable. So pick up any model which has elements to it which are unfalsifiable and observable, and there are parts to it which are falsifiable. Um, okay, so I'm not clear on why I need to bring a model that's unfalsifiable to make the point I'm trying to make. Um, no. mo the model has elements of it which are unfalsifiable and the model has elements which are right, falsifiable. Right. No, 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 I understand. I'm just not clear on why I need to have a model that both to illustrate the point I'm trying to make. Like we can apply because, it to... Because, because, because that's what, uh, you know, that's where we are in, the, in terms of modern physics. We are at, at a place in modern physics where, you know, the, most of the theories for the last hundred years are, have such elements where the parts of which are unfalsifiable and parts of which are falsifiable. Yeah, but it's and not clear. Is, yeah, that, but it's still, that's fine though. I can accept that. Yeah, I can accept that, but it's not clear on why I need to use an example like that just to illustrate what data generating process, how, how that's demonstrated. Like I can, like I can. Because the Puranic model also has parts of it which are unfalsifiable, AKA demigods, and the parts of it which are falsifiable, which are predictions coming out of that process. So, right, but why is that? Yeah, but why is yeah, but why is it necessary for me to? Um, what what does that have to do with my ability to explain what how data generating process being the same as testing? Well, because like, look, if, you can't, if you can't do it in, in a case of a model which has both unfalsifiable and false, well, part, it's not that I can. That, I just it's I'm not saying that I can. It's just not clear why I would have to. Like I'm just trying to. to all I'm trying to do. Is you're trying to draw an analogy. Yeah, all, all I'm trying to do, all I'm, all I'm trying to do right now is explain, look, I'm trying to answer a question. The question posed to me was how I would test whether two different data sets have the same data generating process. No, no that, 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 that was not my question. I said clearly, in the case of Einstein theory of relativity, how uh -huh. would you show that they are from the same data generating process? That is the reason I picked up that theory. Wait, what are the theory. same? Wait, what are the same data generating process between what and what? Two different, two different groups of, of propositions, or two and, different groups uh, of data and a proposition about those two different groups of data. What's the so question? It, so the question is, uh, in a case of a, in a case of a model, in a case of a model such as Einstein theory of relativity, mm -hmm. how would you show or, or how would you establish that the statement that the gravity, how would you show uh, that the elements which are falsifiable, unfalsifiable, how would you show that they are from the same data generating process? 
Oh, okay. I see. I see what. Okay, so you're asking um, how two. Di why? How could I uh, show that two different statements of Einstein's theory of relative relativity are from the same data generating process? Okay, so there are some ways of, of doing that. Now, the ways that are um, done here is not um, using uh, uh, establishing that they're from the same data generating process because we are inferring them from a type of abduct abductive reasoning. So. Okay. The argument that I uh, presented here um, was just using an induction. Now, if you want to put a, a different argument on the table, uh, like a, a, a like an abductive type of argument. So, for example, okay. So, just to, uh, to fully answer the question, so if there are two dip groups of statements um, by that are may, entailed by Einstein's theory of general relativity, one could simply uh, examine those two statements and look at a given proposition about. The, the data, uh, sorry. So if there is like different data that Einstein's theory of general relativity would say about it, um, how do we know that the data with respect to what we're asking is for, is uh, from the same generate data generating process with respect to what we're trying to find the, tr the truth value of? One way is to test them. So for example, if Einstein's theory of general relativity hypothetically said, you know, that uh, cluster A uh, uh, grouping of, of stars uh, has process X would have features X, Y, Z 60% of the time. And cluster B grouping of stars would have uh, features X, Y, Z um, uh, 60% of the time. Um, and we've tested A. Um, we, we, to A, we actually have tested. And lo and behold, it's 60%. Now, how do we know that uh, cluster B would be from the same data generating process of that statement? Well, one way to do is take a sample set of those stars and test them. And we can say, okay, so, well. Uh, I think you're, you're again strawmanning my argument here. I'm trying to. I'm trying no, I'm to just answering you. I'm just answering your question. No, you're right? not. You're, so, not you're, you're, you're skipping. You're trying to you know, skip. Sorry to say. But uh, what I'm, I'm asking you a simple. I asked you earlier also. We're asking of two data points or two statements, one of which is falsifiable, the other, other of which is unfalsifiable. So I gave you the example in Einstein's theory of relativity. There is an unfalsifiable oh, statement that gravity is a con contortion of space. Oh, then you may. Time. Oh, then you. I don't know. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you may. You may not be. Okay. So then you may not be able. Um, yeah. So you there. Okay. So just to be clear, so are you saying there are? Um, there is a theory, um, and the theory has this. Um, I take it to be untestable. Well, I, if it's unfalsifiable, I don't know how one would may may test it, but. If I take it to be that, and you tell me if I'm misrepresenting you. So there is uh, a data set um, uh, A, and then there's data set B. And then the question is, how do we test if there, how, how do we see if the uh, propositions of data set B are from the same data generating process that we would expect as uh, from the propositions with respect to data set A, if data set B is untestable, like it's unfalsifiable? Uh, or, yeah, or something. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying and, uh, okay, so, so, the, so the, then the, the I will, of, yeah, I can answer that. In the case of Einstein theory of relativity, it's a concrete example where data set B is space, uh, gravity being a contortion of space and time, and there are predictions of data set A, which is, which is basically a deflection of, you know, light coming from the sun or the far away stars due to the gravitational pull mm -hmm. of other bodies along the way. Yeah. Okay. So I can answer that. So the the answer to that is you may not be able to determine if it's from the same data generating process. What I would point out, though, is that the fact that you are not able to test if it's from the same data generating process or to support or substantiate that it's from the same data generating process doesn't somehow alleviate the burden if you're trying to make an induction to show that it's from the same degenerating process. And so you'd have to try to get to that conclusion from another way. Namely, instead, you'd have to abandon the ab uh, induction route and go to some kind of abduction route. So you may the answer is you may not be able to because okay. it's untestable. So, but so but the fact the, that you're unable to, the fact that you're unable to in, in terms of induction doesn't somehow absolve you of the burden of actually showing that it is from the same data generating process in order to show the induction goes through. Now, if you want to say, well, how do we, why do we believe that at all then? Well, there are other ways of believing it, such as uh, abduct, abductive uh, inferences.
but then you'd have to abandon the induction one. So just okay. So then, okay. Yeah, then, sure. then how would you? Okay. Sure. So then how would you establish in the case of Einstein's general relativity that gravity is a contortional space and time? If you're, it seems that you are, you're agnostic about that claim, given the inductive method, how would you establish that? Oh, oh, it would be for it would be the abductive route, like I said. So just so we're we're clear, there's two routes that I'm, I'm trying to see which one, where you're going. So one route you can go is to set is an inductive route. The inductive route is essentially to say, okay, we have an X, a data set of X amount of predictions. They've all shown to be true. Um, that gives us inductive reason to believe that the next ones are going to be true. Um, now it could be more more tweaked than that. You can say they're um, extraordinary within this data set. You can say that. Um, to date, that's fine. All I'm pointing out to you is that if you can't show that the um, future predictions are from the same data set, then you can't make some any sort of inductive leap. Um, now you may so be able to make certain sorry. abductive. Wait, hold on. Let so me just, like. Yeah. Okay, sure. So you're saying. So you're saying that sometimes summarize it. You're saying in the case of a model which has both falsifiable elements and falsifiable elements, inductive reason fails to establish both of them for sure and therefore we have to uh, resort to abductive reasoning so can you explain what kind of abductive model would you would you apply in the case of einstein's theory of relativity to establish the gravity the space time contortion yeah so those would be explanatory virtues right so explanatory virtues i mean we can go through them but it would be the case that so first of all it would be clear that um, there would be some sort of uh, account for why we could uh, have the predictions that we do from the theory. So it's clear why we why the theory uh, predict the theory actually does make those predictions. It's clear why the um, theory generates those predictions. Um, at least some of those are testable. The hypothesis can be tested. Um, it there then the, when the, then there's background knowledge. So is the hypothesis consistent with facts, independent of those uh, it is trying to explain? There's past success. Does the hypothesis fit within a uh, tradition that has a track record of explanatory success? There's simplicity. Is the hypothesis readily falsifiable, uh, or at least part of it being falsifiable? Does it rely on a few auxiliary hypotheses? So that's another thing to consider: how many auxiliary hypotheses are needed here ontological economy. So that would be if the hypothesis relies on well understood ontological entities or processes, um, if it has sufficient reason to posit novel ontological entities. Uh, informativeness, um, does the hypothesis specify some sort of causal mechanism from precise uh, effects that can be deduced? There's other things, There's there's um, but, but the point is here that we would need, so here's basically what we need. We would need, um, some sort of theory. The theory uh, makes testable predictions. It's clear that from the theory why that those testable predictions are made. So it's not just, so it's not an example of spurious unification. And, or at least for it to be a, a, uni a virtue of unification that it, like it, that it unites these different predictions under one umbrella explanation. And so broadly, a theory that ex makes predictions, it's clear why the, it's clear what the predictions are expected of based on what the theory is, or at least we're able to show the entailments. And that it has the explanatory virtues. And the more explanatory virtues, the more abductive reason we have to believe in that theory. So that's what I would apply to Einstein's theory of relativity. And it seems to meet so uh, in, in case of, in, I, I'm not really clear. So in the case of Einstein relativity, you're saying it should be able to make novel testable predictions, and it should be able to provide uh, reasonable explanatory power explanations. Is that is that well? Not more method? than more than that. More than that. It's also the bare minimum is that we can actually. It's the predictions are derivable from the theory. In other words, so. It's not like they're um, particularist predictions. It's not like we have like it, so. Are, are using... you back to the same? Are you back to the same post? No, no, no. So there's so there's um, there's unification and then there's spurious unification. So when we have a theory that has some um, 
explanation of facts where such that diff various different facts are derivable from the same uh it's the predictions are derivable from the same theory that's very different from a theory that has particular predictions that are not it's where it's not clear that they're all um the predictions are all derivable from the theory so for example I, I can give you an example here on the fly so let me think of one um let's say we have a theory that says um let's say we have a theory that says um the force of gravity is going to be uh g m1 m2 over r squared right so that's a prediction now that prediction using using that formula we can derive uh the time it would take for any object to fall onto any other object and it's clear why we could derive that prediction we could just simply plug in g uh the constant m1 m2 over r squared and it would be clear why for any of these different points we would ex we would have a given prediction that we would expect um we could we can uh we can, it, it, and if we have the knowledge that force equals ma, and and we have the the distance form, then it's, it's fine. Then we we it, we would be able to predict all of these things. But now let's say we had another theory, and the other theory said if I drop this can of soda from this height, it will fall in this amount of time. And if I drop a lamp at this height, it would fall in this amount of time. And if I drop a guitar from this and this height, it will fall in this and this amount of time. That actually doesn't have the explanatory virtue of unification. Uh, it, it would be a, spur, a spurious unification because it's not clear from the theory why we would say any of these things. It's not clear why we would um, why it would be entailed that all these predictions would be the case. They're just being listed, and even if they came true, um, it would still fall afoul to the um, to the first theory which does have true unification, which it's very clear from the theory gm1, m2 over r squared, why all these things would fall the way they fall. So there are certain explanatory virtues of Einstein's theory of relativity, one of which uh, is an aspect of unification. That is to say that the, that the predictions are derivable from the theory. They're derivable from the equations uh, provided in that theory. And it's not like they're just making random predictions and they just happen to be fulfilled. There's unif there's an explanatory virtue of unification there. Yeah. So let's thank you for sharing that. So a couple of things here. First, as we discussed earlier, you know, uh, I think we're just changing the post. We now we have a new term called unification. Whereas in inductive, we had a different term. I don't remember. So yeah. the first the first was induction. Yeah, yeah. Induction. Yeah. But that but the reason I just did this is because I'm trying to track no, what route you're trying to go here are you trying to yeah, support yeah, yeah yeah i'm just trying to do if you see if you're i'm trying to tease apart if you're doing an inductive case or an abductive case because well, those the, two the point, are very different the point is that in, in either of the cases you are you're coming to the same problem the problem is that establishing uh, either being unification in abductive reasoning or it being you know the data coming from the same source in the case of or same data generating process in the case of induct, inductive they're the same issues the, what are you not Really understand uh, they're, different, that, they're different issues. No, they're, they're not. Let, well, they're, let, me, let me explain. Let me explain. Give me a chance. You spoke for a long time. I didn't interrupt you, so please be patient and listen. So, uh, in the case of the uh, the second, you know, like the example which you gave, G is, you know, sorry, uh, the G is equal to M and M2 by R squared, you know, the force between two objects. There, you know, you're as, there is no unfalsifiable element being considered. As I said earlier, in a model, like uh, like in, in the modern physics models, in the modern uh, if if you in the modern physics theory, in the modern uh, fundamental theories of physics, you will find this quite often that the parts of the model are unfalsifiable. Just as in the case of Einstein's theory of general, general relativity, there's that's a fine. part of it. There's a part of it. Yeah, that's is, that's that's fine. I can so I can modify. Let, let, yeah, I can let modify. Me I can modify. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, but the reason why I, I, I'll I, tell you the reason I'm interrupting. No, so I, I don't. The reason I'm no, sorry. Okay, but, sorry. Sorry. I, the I, reason, didn't interrupt you when you, I didn't interrupt you when you were No, 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 speaking. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. The reason I'm interrupting you is because I understand what you're saying and I can modify the examples to you. You can modify, the but let, let me finish. You spoke, okay, I that's fine. If you want to continue, okay. Yeah, I'm just letting yeah. you know that I've understood that. Unless there's another critique, totally fine, I can modify it. 
Yeah, that's fine. But I'd like to present, you know, say my things which I want to say because, you know, I, lis I listen to you patiently and I, I just want respect that I'm, I'm being allowed to speak and present whatever I'd like to present before you, you know, present, you know, your new formulation. So in, uh, in the case of, you know, the example which you gave, uh, both the parts are, you know, are you know, belonging to the falsifiable room. Like, but in the case of Einstein's relativity, there is a there is a part of it which is unfalsifiable. With the space being space and time contortion, there is no way that by which you can you know establish uh, or or test that part or establish that as a cause because somebody can come with with a uh, with another you know uh, kind of uh, unfalsifiable element. But what really matters is that based upon the unfalsifiable proposition, when you draw the predictions, as you mentioned, there should be you know, uh, very unique predictions. And they should not be just going random, there should not be random predictions going everywhere here and there, but they should be, uh, you know, conforming to one specific field or one specific direction based upon the initial data. So that's something you're saying, that, that's something, that's how you're saying that we will really establish a model which has both unfalsifiable and falsifiable elements. So that it would be, the, that it would be, well, just to be, just to be clear, the, so that it would be clear that the predictions generated, whether falsifiable or unfalsifiable, it would be clear that they are actually entailed predictions from the theory. So for example, and just to modify it, we can have GM1, M2 over R squared, and then we can also say, I by the way, I'm well, sorry, here, well, you, you keep saying you okay. want to finish, but you keep making the same point me, that I've already give, acknowledged, I understand, and can respond to. Give me 45 seconds, and I'll give you. Then you can, okay, you can, cool. you can, you can finish. Just give me 45 seconds. So, uh, in the case of the Puranas, there is clear state, as I shared with the, the statement one, two, and three, which you very really nicely formulated, formulated there. The, uh, the the gods are related with the uh, you know events such as the mass extinction, the beginning of the sun, uh, and the beginning of the universe. And those data points which are given in the Puranas are you know very precise predictions. And they're not just random predictions; they're coming out of the same process. They're you know corresponding to very specific events not just here and there and those predictions which have been made in the puranas they are you know matching the modern scientific observations to 0.1 percent and mind you these three different fields mass extinction the birth of the sun and the birth of the universe they conform to two three different fields of science and they have been thoroughly tested in the last 20 years in fact all these statements which is uh, which i discussed the three of them they're very very significant scientific propositions so given the strength of these, you know, novel testable of, you know, predictions, which have matched with the observations, uh, there is a case to be made that the Puranic model or the Puranic model, which has the unfalsifiable fiber elements, such as the gods, may be given credence, may be accepted as much as we accept Einstein's theory of relativity, where it says the gravity is a space time contortion. Okay. So I just want to know what, at this point, I just want to know what the inference is. So well, I'll, I'll go to the, um, cause you agreed with, here's the thing. Like you agreed, here's where I'm at. When I gave, when I formalized the argument the first time, um, when I formalized the argument the first time, you couldn't give an argument for premise four. Then you said you didn't, uh, well, what if there, what, why do you accept things where you, uh, that are unfalsifiable or some things that are unfalsifiable? I say, I do it from an abductive inference, not an inductive inference. So if you want to, go to a different argument off of inductive inference to an abductive inference, we can. I would just need to redo the in, rewrite the inference, whatever that may be. Now, just to um, modify, perform the modification, just to illustrate the difference between unification and spurious well, unification. Uh, no, I have an objection. OK, well, now you're not letting me finish. Wait, hold on. OK. So I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I just, I just say I have an objection, but I'm not saying I'm going to speak something. You OK, 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 speak. OK. All right, all right. Look, so just what I just so just to explain the difference between unification and spurious unification, um, I can give you the example of uh, with an unfalsifiable context. So we say GM one M two over R squared. Oh, and by the way, also GM one M two over R squared, where mass is also like non-physical mass out there, and we have and there's just no way of testing that. Now it's still the case that with respect to the physical mass. Um, it, there is unification. So GM1, M2 over R squared, it would still be different in its explanatory power from just a prediction, a, a particularist pred predictions of just, oh, this wine glass or, oh, this guitar or, oh, this blanket will fall at this and this time. Rather, GM1, M2 over R squared in the context of 
natural and supernatural, the natural components would still have unification. Now, where I'm at right now is I formalize this argument. Nice, we have wine glasses here. Um, I formalize this argument. We asked for an argument for premise four. Um, no argument has been given for premise four, but it was said, well, maybe it might not be possible to give it for because it was unfalsifiable, right? So now that's fine. There's other ways of giving reasons for certain unfalsifiable things on my view that may be certain in abductive inferences. But if that's the case, I need to know what the abductive inference is. So what I would like at that point, if we're going to abandon the inductive route and try to do an abductive inference, I would like to know what the abductive inference is, and then I, I will be more than happy to help formalize uh, the abductive inference. So my objection is this. Uh, in right in the beginning of the debate, I, I started with giving an example of Einstein theory of relativity, and I specifically gave the example of gravity being, gravity being space and time contortion for a reason, because I was not sure what language you're, you're using here in terms of proposition logic. I'm not trained in that science. So that's why I gave the example, and it was you who, who put that model in in the in inductive reasoning. So I'm not sure if it's really my issue or you know that that uh, we started with the inductive um, you know modulation of it because just just to start with, I I stated you something right in the beginning that hey I'm trying to to present my argument in a in a way similar to Einstein's theory of general relativity where there are features such as gravity being space and time contortion. And there, the same Einstein theory of general relativity makes predictions which are very, very extraordinary in nature. And my uh, argumentation is going to be along the same lines. So how would we frame it? And at that time, you had suggested that we can do it in the form of, you know, inductive reasoning. Then you said that, okay, we can do it, but uh, somehow we have to show, like in the case of Einstein theory of general relativity, that the P4, which is that they're coming from the same data generating process. And somehow there, in the case of Einstein theory of general relativity, you are saying that we cannot really establish that something unfalsifiable, such as uh, that gravity being a space and contortion uh, can be coming from the same data generating process because inductive reasoning fails there. So now you're suggesting, let us frame it in case of an objective reasoning or objective model, which I'm open to. And, but it seems to me it's just you know, a play of words because instead of the same data generating process, we have a terms like unification or spurious unification. Mm -hmm. So I'm open to the idea of formulating it again in case of abductive. I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah. because here's the thing. I I'm just trying to, to take all the routes that you can, or at least tr see what you're saying or hear what you're saying and try my best to, for to formulate in terms of a type of inference. Um, it seemed to be like, and, and maybe this is my mistake, but it seemed to be that we were trying to go for some side of it, some kind of induction, um, and that and if that doesn't work, we can go, we can try to do it with an abduction, which is what you seem to be going for now. I just want to be clear on what it doesn't matter which route you're going, whether you're going for an inductive route or an abductive route. I just want to be clear on which route you're trying to you're trying to take. Um, that's all. So let, let, let us do the thing for Einstein theory of general relativity because that's something which everybody is familiar with. Uh, let's draw an objective, uh, you know, model for it, and then we can replace that with Puranas as we did earlier. If that's okay with you? Okay. Yeah. Sure. We can try to formalize an abductive argument. Okay. Can I just say something? Sure. I think that the data generating process we're talking about with regards uh, to the in the case of Einstein theory of relativity, like, uh... you know, there is the you know the uh, the foundational proposition that the gravity is a contortion of space and time, and then based upon that, uh, you know, there are predictions about uh, deflection of light coming from stars due to the gravitational pulls of uh, planetary bodies along the way, and uh, those observations have been found to the observations have been found to match with the predictions from Einstein's theory of general, general relativity, and thus it is established that uh, gravity must be a contortion of space and time. I mean, I, I don't hey, know. I'm, I'm, I would, hey, I'm going to try to put this into like some uh, in, in inference. Um, I'll try to do the best I can to do it with the Puranas. So if the if the Puranas, so. I'm just not clear on what the inference is with the piranhas, though. 
Like that's that's where what, I'm at. Like what, I'm not. I'm I, like I can because I don't think the Puranas predict that space and light contort. So I'm not sure I can what, just simply replace Einstein's theory of relativity with the Puranas there. Well, let, well let, they are in some sense because you know there's the, the basics, the foundation that 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 is a space that gravity is not just a force. Uh, you know, it's, it's something which is coming out of the uh, transformation of space and time. And that's something that transformation of space and time cannot be observed by our eyes or by any instrument. Wait, wait, I think you've misunderstood what I was trying to say. Because what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to um, formalize an abductive inference for for your position. And so that, I, but, I was able to do that earlier uh, because it's... Thing, yeah, go ahead. One thing, is it possible that you can, we can do quickly first for Einstein theory of relativity? General answer so you have general relativity, and then we can do with the. I mean, Purana. I can, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I can. It's just the reason I don't think that's going to work by just a simple replacement is because in the case of induction, I was able to simply replace Purana, Einstein's theory of general relativity with Puranas, um, because it was it was all just about the the proportion of previously true predictions. But in the case of abduction, uh, based on what you've said, I'm not sure that that will work because I don't. I think that. Uh, a simple substitution um, in some of those premises that you've mentioned won't be actually true of the Puranas. For example, um, so, so I mean, well, but we, we can we can try it. I mean, so for example, I, I so for, we can start with premise one. And we can say, okay, so so what is premise one? Premise one is, I mean, the reason I'm hesitant that it'll work is simply because I don't hear you, by the way, if you're trying to talk. The reason I'm no, hesitant I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say anything, but at uh, first I was saying maybe we can try quickly for Einstein's theory of general relativity. Sure. I mean, I, I can try and it. I, but... And then I, I have a better understanding than what kind of language you're looking at, because as I said, this is new for me, and I really appreciate your, uh, that, you're, that you're working on this with me. Okay. Um, so premise one for Einstein's theory. Okay, so Einstein's theory of relativity, we can say like if... Um, if Einstein's theory of general relativity, um, so predicts, so what, so, so sorry, what, so what premise were you trying to say that for Einstein's theory of relativity? Well, it made predictions regarding deflection of light coming from far away stars, uh, that how they would be deflected by the gravitational pull of you know, bodies along the way of, you know, planetary bodies along the way. And the deflection predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity, you know, was way more, you know, closer to the observation than any other models currently out there. Okay, so if Einstein's theory of general relativity makes entailed predictions about the deflection of gravitational stars and, um, and those predictions are extraordinary you're muted are we somehow oh sorry about that can you hear me now okay so if einstein's theory of general relativity um general relativity makes entailed predictions about the deflection of gravitational stars and those predictions are extraordinary and the theory theory also entails um, the theory also entails uh, that space time that gravity is a product of space and time transformations that gravity is a product product of space and time transformations then we have reason to believe that gravity is a product of space and time transformations space and time transformations okay so then premise two would be einstein's theory of general relativity uh makes intel predictions about the function of gravitational stars Premise three, those predictions are extraordinary and the theory also entails gravity. Oh, those, sorry, those, those predictions are extraordinary. And by those, we mean the predictions that have been shown to be true, which is that one. 
Um, and, and the theory also entails that gravity is a product of space-time transformations. Um, then we have a reason to believe that gravity is a product of space-time transformations. Conclusion, okay. Okay, so the theory also entails, and I will, I'll also add like, just to be, so the theory also entails like in parentheses through unification, just to be clear that it's not some sort of spurious unification. Through unification and the prediction also entails, sorry, so yeah, the reason we believe transformation, okay, and the prediction Oh, the theory, the theory also entails, entails through unification. Okay, just making this formal. Okay, so I have something like this right now. So premise one, if Einstein's theory of general relativity makes entailed predictions about the deflection of gravitational stars and those predictions are extraordinary and the theory also entails uh, through unification, just so just to be clear that it's not a spurious unification, it's not like some other random statement, like it's actually clear how from the theory that that's entailed, uh, that gravity is a product of space and time transformations, then we have a reason to believe that gravity is a product of space and time transformations. Premise two, Einstein's theory of general relativity makes entailed predictions about the deflection of gravitational stars. Premise three, those predictions are extraordinary. Premise four, the theory also entails the unification that the gravity, that gravity is a product of space and time transformations. Uh, and then conclusion is then we have reason to believe. So we have reason to believe that uh, the uh, that gravity is a product of space and time transformations. Is that is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Now, how do I? So my question is, how do I do this same thing with the Puranas and and the conclusion you're trying to show? Because like with with Einstein's theory of relativity, like okay, I get this. There's a, there's explanatory virtues here. There's unification. There's, uh, it's making extraordinary predictions. Um, there, are, there seem to be things that are um, in favor of Einstein's theory of relativity uh, over certain other theories. Um, now, now, what? let's try the same formalization for the Puranas with the conclusion that you're trying to show here. And I take it to be that the conclusion you're trying to show here is that God exists or Krishna exists, or it doesn't have to be Krishna, uh, like the name Krishna, but I take it to be the conclusion is that God exists or... Yeah, or or yeah. what? Yeah, God okay. exists, and and so okay. here we have replaced the 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 you know everything remains the same practically except Einstein's relativity gets replaced by Puranas, and when we say gravity is is a transformation of space and time, gets replaced by the uh, statement that gods are responsible, or uh, or gods are the, are the people behind these significant events in the history of Earth and the universe. In the solar system. Okay, so if the Puranas, so let's just try this. So if if the Puranas make entailed predictions about, so make entailed predictions about about what about they make predictions about significant. They don't really make a prediction, but they're making statements or they're they're giving up. They're observing. I'm not sure what, you, what we call them prediction or not. But anyways, they're making a statement about the significant events in the history of Earth, solar system, and the universe. Okay, so if the Puranas make entailed predictions about the significant events of the Earth, solar system, and the universe, and those predictions are extraordinary, and the theory, and, and the Puranas, so the theory, so the Puranas, U R A N A S also entails parentheses through unification and parentheses that gravity is a product of space and time. Oh, sorry, not so. What am I so? Uh, so that, saying, that, oh, sorry, that God exists. And the theory also entails that God exists. Yeah, God exists. Then we have reason to believe that gravity is a pro. Uh, sorry, that God exists. Sorry, uh, that God exists. Then we have reason to believe that God exists. Okay, that God exists. Replacing that. Okay, and then premise two, the Puranas. So 
So premise two, the piranhas make entailed predictions about the deflection, uh, sorry, about the significant events of the Earth's solar system in the universe. I mean, you can see and those events and those predictions are extraordinary. We'll write percent parenthesis true to date. Failed true to date. Okay, the piranhas make a tail true to date. True to date. Predictions about the significance of the Earth's solar system and universe. Those predictions are extraordinary. And the piranhas, the piranhas also entails through unification that God exists. Uh, that God exists. Conclusion, God exists. Okay, so conclusion, God. Okay, so tell me if this is right. I'm hosting this in general every time I formulate. Yeah, this, yeah, this is correct. Yeah. This is, this is, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm satisfied with it. Okay, so, so, I'll, so just so we're clear on what the inference is. Premise one, if the Puranas make entailed, true to date, predictions about the significant events of the Earth, solar system, and universe, and the predictions are extraordinary, and the Puranas also entails the unification that God exists, then we have a reason to believe that God exists. Um, or at least I'll say we have a reason to believe that God exists. We have a reason to believe that God exists. Okay. Okay. Um, so premise two, the piranhas make entailed true today predictions about the significant events of the Earth, solar system, and universe. Premise four, the piranhas also entail, uh, entails the unification that God exists. Uh, then conclusion, we have a reason to believe that God exists. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, so I think at this point, um, if we were to grant premise one, uh, we will, if we were, sorry, if we were to grant premise two, um, and if we were to grant premise three, then I guess the issue uh, we would push, I would push back on, and I'm not sure if, first of all, I have been telling you a lot of talking. I think Jack hasn't been speaking and Arjun hasn't been speaking. It's just been you, me and Siddharth here, so I feel kind of bad. But um, I think I, I take it to be that one thing I would push back on is um, without getting into premise, even if I were to grant for the sake of argument premise two, I would push back on premise four. That is to say the piranhas uh, entails through unification that God exists. Um, so one thing I would, I, I don't, I would, contest is I'm not sure if it's through unification or spurious unification. Um, I'm not sure if Jack has the same view here. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get it. Four, how do you establish unification between, uh, you know, between the, the falsifiable and unfalsifiable elements of the theory? Oh, yeah. So, so one way you could do that is with, the, with equations. So, um, it could be the case that the equations of a theory simply um, entail that certain things can happen and you simply wouldn't be able to t test those things. So that would be the case in Einstein's theory of relativity. Um, so if there were like some equations in the Puranas, for example, that somehow like they can get to some a conclusion that uh, like of a, of a prediction that we wouldn't be able to test, um, but all the other things that those equations entailed were testable and they came true, that that would give us some reason. Um, but the issue is it's it's not clear if that's a unification or a spurious unification. Um, but I, I just want to because it, I, I just want to make sure we're on all the same page. Um, do you see any issue with that, Jack? Or is there something you want to is there something that you are trying to figure out? Because I because I formalized this, right? Um, um. I'm trying to understand what is the through unification. Oh yeah, in other words, that in, in other words, it's to say that they're not uh, disentangleable, that it's not spurious unification. So, in other words, it's to say that um, the proposition God exists is not disentangleable from the other propositions in the Puranas that uh, that have been shown to be true. So in other words, that it's it's like this theory that entails all of these predictions, and it's not just this one additional prediction that's being thrown out there. Is that is that clear? I'm just thinking about it. Okay. 
I think that the kind of uh, back to the uh, method of knowledge gener or data generation, the kind of data generation we're talking about with the piranhas is. Uh, you're cutting out for me. Is he cutting out for anyone else or just me? Yeah, he's cutting out. Well, well, Arjun, I think with the data generating process, that was just for the uh, induction, inductive route, inductive inferences. That wouldn't actually apply to the abductive case because we're not actually making any inductions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just never got to say what I had to say about that point. I, um, so I think what we're talking about is that the data generation process, the way the piranhas know these things is the same way an owner's manual knows the stuff about the products. It's, it's not that... It's not like Einstein's theory where it's it's deduced through you know equations and induction and you know like basically the the Vedic way of talking about that is uh, observa oh well, yeah the scientific ways observation and logic it, it's it's con considered to be revealed knowledge and it's the same with an owner's manual you know that they decide how the product's going to be and then they write how the product is for the end user so you know how do you determine if if something's an, uh, got accurate isn't actually an owner's manual well you you find out that everything about it that you're able to verify is true and you can't see how someone would have all that knowledge other than the person who designed the product. Okay, well, just real quick, because uh, because I can respond to that, but I, it, that would bring us back to the inductive route. So, so we, we can do that, and I have a response to what you just said. Um, I just tried to not pivot. I, I don't want the debate to pivot as just a point of process. I don't want the debate to pivot between an inductive inference and an abductive inference. I'd rather the debate stay on one until it's dealt with. Um, so it, it, we can take either route you'd like, because I we can go back to the inductive route and I can respond to that, or we can continue with the ab abductive route. Let's see what Siddharth wants to do. He's the one pressing these arguments. Because we were, because we were on the uh, we were this formalization that we've just done is an abductive one. Um, so and and just so we're clear on what Jack was asking. Um, premise four is just that all this is saying is that the piranhas as a theory, uh, sorry, as, as a, um, if we treat it as a theory, it just, it all, it entails that God exists. And this entailment is the same entailment as the other predictions that the piranhas have put forth. That is to say that they're not disentangleable, that they are, um, that the same theory is entailing all of these different propositions. So it's not like some theory, premise four is saying that the piranhas are not like some theory that is just spitting out random unrelated predictions. And it's not clear what th what is unifying them. Like, is that, are we clear on, on all of that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, okay. yeah. All right, so now, so if we've decided, so, okay, so if we decided that we're going to continue on the abductive route, um, what I want to, and it's important, right? Because, like, if, if you have Einstein's theory of relativity and then randomly all of a sudden Einstein wrote, like, oh, there's going to be flying monkeys, as Siddhar said, like, we wouldn't accept that there's going to be flying monkeys. Um, even, even if the, we wouldn't, that's not a, if they were flying monkeys on, like, some, like, nebula somewhere that we could never examine. That's not a type of false, unfalsifiable claim that we would believe. We would we want the claim to be in, entailed. It wouldn't be detachable um, from the theory itself. So what we're looking for is that the, the, the God claim, that God exists, is not detachable from the other predictions of the Puranas that have already been shown to be true, right? Does that make sense? In other words, we're looking for the, yeah, we're looking for what the piranhas, what the theory is that gets us to all of these predictions that are shown to be true. And we're also looking for the claim that God exists to also be entailed by that theory. Have we still got Siddharth? Maybe we've lost him.
Um, the argument I would have argued for it would be an inference to the best hypothesis that this data is uncannily accurate and there's no other way it could be known other than by a divine process, which is different from the way Siddharth's been arguing it. And, uh, Are you saying that, wait, but when you say best hypothesis, that sounds like abduction, abduction, which is the way he's been arguing it. Are you going to go back? Are, are do we want to go back to in induction and try to do it that way and, and for you to try to make the case that it's from the same data generating process? Uh, I mean, I, I think there's a stronger case to be made for inference to the best hypothesis. And that also requires okay. that if you're going to reject it, you need an alternative explanation. Oh, well, that's, I, I'm not sure if that's clear to me. Um, so, so I mean, that, I mean, there's two. So first of all, it's not clear to me that if you, um, it's not clear to me that if you um, reject a theory or reject a hypothesis that you need to have another one. That's not clear to me. Um, it's also, I mean, if, if you're looking at the best hypothesis, then you need to have a better hypothesis. That something's got to be the best hypothesis at any given time. Well, no, you could you could accept no you could I mean here's the thing like you could accept that there's a hypothesis that's the best hypothesis, but still uh, still are not sure if that's any good at all. Um, like we could throw out any old hypothesis. Like if I if there's a given phenomena, and I'm just completely unsure of what the what explains it. Someone can posit that there's like some sort of tooth barrier around that's that's doing the phenomena, and I may not know why it is, but even if it's that's the only hypothesis on the table, it's by de, de facto the best one. It's still not clear that that's a good one. Um, yeah, so you you can say that none of the hypotheses are any good. That's fine. Yeah, so so that so I'm not sure about that. And then the other the other um, the other uh, and it's also not clear that. Um, we do not have another uh, hypothesis because like one, so uh, there's two hypotheses on the table that seem to be there. Like one hypothesis is that all of the uh, prediction, all of the propositions in the Puranas, including that God exists are true, is true. And then the other proposition, uh, oh, sorry, the other hypothesis is that uh, some, but not all of the propositions in the Puranas are true. So those seem like two competing hypotheses. They're actually mutually exclusive. And it's just not clear to me why I would favor one more than the other. So I'm so uh, so my pushback is on two things. Like number one, even if I don't have um even if I don't have a competing hypothesis, it doesn't really follow that hypothesis that I do have is any good. And two, it seems like there are two hypotheses on the table. Uh well, the hypothesis we're talking about is how did that data come to be known? So just to say it's true, but the other stuff's false doesn't give an explanation of how that data came to be known. Oh, I see. Well, that's well, that's a diff. Yeah. OK, so if yeah, so I could just. Yeah. But the thing is, um, but then I would just go to my, the first thing I said, um, you know, it, how it, the fact that I may not have an explanation, it's not clear to me why that gives me reason to believe that the explanation that is there is a good one. So like someone sa can say, like, OK, well, you know, there's these predictions that were true. How did they, how was it known? And someone can say, well, okay, so some tooth fairy knew them and put them there. Like, and, you know, so, and that may be the only hypothesis, uh, the only explanation on the table. It's just not clear to me why that would be any good. Um, so I, I just want to, I just want to try to like, if, if you're taking the conversation over from Siddharth, I, I'd want to do the same thing. I'd want to like have an inference because I take it to be the proposition you're trying to show to be the case is that God exists or we have reason to believe God exists. And I just want to know the inference for that. Well, yeah, the inference would, would you, you need to get, establish one of the premises first. So we first have to establish that the Puranas are uh, divinely revealed knowledge. So like, you know, the owner's manual, you can use the induct, uh, was it the inductive reasoning or maybe even deductive reasoning, once you've got the premise established that the Puranas are the owner's manual for the universe, so to speak, that they're divinely renewed, revealed knowledge, then you can say, well, it follows by divinely that, revealed, that. Wait, but by divinely revealed knowledge, do we mean re revealed by God? Wow, well, yeah, that, that, that would be one way of phrasing it, yeah. All right, but that would be, yeah, but that would just be circular, right? Because if the conclusion is God exists, and... The premise, the first premise is the Puranas are revealed by God. 
I mean, it would take. I take it to be that that would require the existence of God, in the first place, right? So if, if... yeah, but we're not assuming God's existence in order to establish it. We're we're um, we're we're giving God's existence and having given that knowledge. You know, you could bake that into one premise if you want, uh, but that's a conclusion of or an explanation for the data which couldn't be known by any other method like you, you mentioned the fairy tale thing like i mean the the tooth fairy thing so i mean if there were you know say people who remembered their past lives and had emotions that fit their past lives knew things that only people who'd lived like that life before knew had scars that matched the mode of death in the past life and so on then it would be reasonable evidence that the soul existed even if you're a priori uh, you know, re your, your prior probability Wait, I, that you assigned to soul we, existing was different. But before we go there, I, I just want to point out to you that if if you have a premise in an argument, so if the, if you make an argument and the conclusion of your argument is God exists, if any of the premises in the argument um, are are uh, are either God exists or in order for the premise to be true, it's required that God exists. It's a circular, um, it's a circular argument because, like, if I say premise one, the Puranas are divinely revealed knowledge, meaning revealed by God, uh, and then I have some conclusion, um, which is God exists. Premise one is presupposing the conclusion, right? So if I have premise one, the Puranas are divinely revealed knowledge, meaning revealed by God, and then I conclude, I, I can add other premises, but I conclude that God exists. Um, it seems it, it's clearly the case that the conclusion is already there in premise one. Yeah. So my point about the past life memories was, uh, you know, with regard to, you know, if you don't think an explanation is a good explanation, what, Wait, that, but that's know, a when the evidence topic. is strong enough. Sorry, guys. I'm yeah, just, that's a different I'm topic. Gonna, I'm going to just pipe in for a second because we've got a moderation request from Siddharth. So Siddharth is saying he has to leave soon, so he's hoping to be able to finish up the abductive portion. Oh, yeah, 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 let, let him go. I just jumped in because uh, we couldn't, uh, it seemed like he'd, he'd yeah, lost yeah. his connection or something. Yeah, of course, of course. And it's, it's of course, up to you if you want to allow him to do that or not. It's for everyone to decide. But if everyone's fine with that, then, yeah, we'll just grant that request. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yep. I'm sure you and Avi can pick up after if you want, Arjuna. You there? So, yeah, okay, so, yeah, so should, yep. just to be clear on what the so are we are we are we putting the debate on pause and and gonna reschedule a later time? No, what what no, are we doing? What Siddharth, what Siddharth is saying is he's gonna have to head out soon, so he wants to okay. finish the abductive part with you before. Oh, he I see, I and see, then, I see. Okay. Then Arjuna okay. can talk after. Yeah. Okay, Siddharth, are you there? Okay. I'm I'm here. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, I can hear him. All right, so I'm back on. What I'm back on is with uh, Siddharth. I'm back on this formalization with uh, premise four. The Puranas also entails the unification that God exists. So that is to say that the that there is some theory that makes the all these predict makes all these propositions or makes these prediction predictive propositions, and um, it's they're indetachable. From the proposition that God exists, that is to say, if the theory is true, it's a, it, it's entailed that these predictions are there, and it's also entailed that God exists. Yes. Yeah, now, so, what so, I want so is an argument. They have to be they have to be inextricab inextricably uh, entangled with each other. Both the things. Yeah. But we can, yeah they're not we can they're work. not detachable from each other. So that's why we have to better understand how those data points are given in the Puranas. And I would try to do, I mean, we'll try to continue for next maybe five minutes. And then if we can't finish by, you know, next five minutes, then we can pick it up some another day because, uh, you know, okay. I have some other engagements planned today. I really appreciate sure, sure. it. First so of all, to be clear. We, may, we may finish up as soon, but I appreciate your, your time and that this discussion. So in, okay. the, in, the, in the Puranas. Just to be clear about what I want, though. Sarah, just because yeah. what, I want, what I want is an argument for premise four, right? So what I want is that. Uh, I want the argument with the conclusion of the argument to be that the Puranas also entails through unification that God exists. Yeah, I understand. So let's take the example of, uh, of the uh, birth of the sun. So according to the Puranas, Brahma, uh, who, who is one of the gods, he lives for billions of years. Each of his day 
is 8.64, uh, roughly 8.64 billion years. And, uh, at the, and then he, it is followed by a night. So at the end of his night, he constructs the solar system he's in charge of. And uh, his day, his last night ended 4.563 billion years ago. So here we see that, and then, uh, you know, uh, he uh, usually, not usually, but it's said in the Puranas that at the end of his day, the solar system is wound up. So the solar system is finished in, in that case. Like, you know, the sun is just, the sun, the sun destroys the, the whole of the solar system by becoming a red giant. So um, the, this establishes a couple of things, uh, you know, that the Brahma, uh, you know, uh, established a couple of things, one of them being that the, that the sun's lifetime, at least in our solar system, is going to be around 9.5 billion years, you know, adding up some years here and there, and um, which is practically the life, which is actually the lifetime for our sun. And uh, the end of Brahma's night happened 4.563 billion years ago, which is exactly uh, uh, which the scientists say when our sun was you know created or when our sun began in the solar system and that was 4.567 billion years ago the difference between between the two dates between 0.08 percent so uh here brahma's life in fact brahma's whole you know whole life cycle is inextricably you know uh entangled with the lifetime of the sun and the solar system it's not that the birth of the sun is a separate fact stated in the Puranas, but it is part of the whole historical account, which is repeated numerous times in the Puranas. So I don't see a way by which we can separate Brahma from these data points in the Puranas without destroying the whole Puranas and just practically writing a new book, because that's how they are stated. All right, I'm going to try to formalize this. Um, so premise one is Brahma's day uh, lives for 8.64 million years, and then he lives by night. Premise two, his last, last night not, was 4.5. Not, not, million, okay. not million, billion, billion years. Billion, okay, sorry, sorry, billion, okay. So prom, Brahma's day li is uh, lives for 8.64 billion years, and then he lives by night. No, no, no. Two. His day is 8.64 billion years, and his night also is 8.64 billion years, and he lives for many, many billion of years. I mean, this is just his day and night. He lives for 100 years. You're, you're muted, Avi. You're muted. I can't hear you. Okay, okay. So Brahma's day it lasts for, so I'll say lasts lasts for 8.64 billion years, and then he lives by night, which is also 8.64 billion years. Premise two, his last night was 4.567 billion years ago. Premise three, the sun's lifetime is 9.5 billion years. Um, premise four, Brahma's life cycle is not de detachable from um, the, the fact that I'll just say the fact that the universe began four point. Uh, the, well, the, the, the solar system began, not universe. That the solar system. That the solar system began. Four point five six seven billion years okay. ago. Four point five six seven billion years ago. Okay, Brahma's like. Okay. And then C, which is the conclusion, the Puranas also entails the unification that God exists. Well, uh, Brahma this exists. This is not a valid, yeah. Yeah, Brahma, one of the gods exists, you know. There are many gods. That gods okay, gods exist. Okay, so I, I, this is not a formally valid argument. I'm going to try to formalize it. Um, I'll try my best. So I'll, I can try to say, like, um, if, if Brahma's day lasts for... Okay, let's see. Um, so I can say if Brahma's day 
if okay, so if Brahma's day, that's one of his years, and his night is six hundred years ago, and and okay, and the sun's lifetime is years, and Brahma's life cycle is not attachable to the fact that solar system years ago. Then the piranhas. Okay, so the piranhas. This. Yeah. Well, Isaac, if you want to help me formalize on the go as part of a moderator duty, you're free to do that. All right. <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying here. Okay. I, I would like to also add, uh, if you can add that, uh, his dawn and dusk are also 0. 0.6 mil, uh, billion years. To the okay, first one. So his dawn and dusk are also six billion years. 0.6. Oh, 0. 0.6 billion. 0. 0.6. Okay. Um, and and, th and that is why I said, you know, that that the uh, sun's life life cycle, which is around nine billion years, matches with the Brahma's. 0. 0.61 billion years. 0. 0.6. Yeah. 0. 0.6. Okay. 0. 0.6 billion years. Okay. So premise five. 0. 0. 0. 0. years. Okay. And. Okay. And. Okay. Years ago, and and his dawn and dusk is okay. Fine, and okay. So something like this: if Brahma's day lasts for eight point six four billion years, and uh, then he lives by night, which is also eight point six four billion years, and his last night was four point five six seven billion years ago. And the sun's lifetime is 9.5 billion years. And the Brahma's life cycle is not detachable from the fact that the solar system began 4.567 billion years ago. And his dawn and dusk are 0 0.6 billion years. Then the Puranas also entails the unification that God exists. Premise 2. Sorry, I'll say premise 2. Premise two is just the first part. Premise three is just the second uh, uh, statement. Premise four is the third statement. Premise five is the fourth statement. Premise six is the fifth statement. And then we just have the conclusion. Um, would that be accurate, what I've written in general? Yeah, this is good. This is good. So where, where, is, that, is that cool with you? I mean, I'm just trying to take what your argument is and try to formalize it um, before I, before I, because I, I like to be clear on what people are saying before I try to like push back. Yeah, so, please tell me very, very push back. <laughs> okay. So, okay. And so, I, okay, let's see. Brahma's life cycle is not detachable from the fact that the solar system is, solar system began four hundred years ago. I mean, I, I don't see, I mean, premise five, uh, I, I don't see, well, so I don't see the case for premise five. I'm not even sure if I see that premise, I don't, I'm not even sure if I see, um, I'm not even sure if premise one would be true. So I'm not, I, I'm just not sure why I would accept premise one. And I'm not sure why I would accept, um, even if I grant the other premises, I'm not sure if I would um, grant premise five. So I, if, if there could be arguments for those or a reason for, so Detroit or detachable just means that like it's entailed. Like, so for example, like if a theory predicts, um, a, B, and C, it's like they're not separate predictions. It's clear from like the theory how A, B, and C are all entailed. Like if you accept the theory, uh, a given theory, then the prediction A is not detachable from B or, or C or D. So it's not like some book is just randomly spitting out random predictions and you have no clue like where they're coming from. So like if you have Newton's uh, laws of physics, if you have like G, M1, M2 over R squared, it's it's not detachable from that theory that, uh, you know, the the glass of wine will fall if I drop it and the guitar will fall if I drop it. Like those two predictions are not detachable from each other. They're entailed by the same theory. So some P is not detachable from theory T if theory T entails, uh, P is not, yeah, theory T entails P, yeah. That's right. Exactly. So, and 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 also, I would say that the if if so, in other words, if if theory T pot is in if so if P if a, if P Q and R and S 
are entailed by theory T. Um, I would say that on theory T, P, Q, R, and S are predictions that are not detachable from each other because they're all entailed on that theory T. They're all entailed by the same theory. So, so if, in something, other words, you know, here, here I presented, you know, in P1, P2, P3, P4, as you write, write it down, you said you have problems yeah. with P1 or you have problems with P4. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I'm where. just, I'm, so I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if P, I'm not sure why I would accept P1. I'm not sure why I would accept uh, P4. P1, P1 is a state, P1 is a statement from the Puranas. And that's, that's stated in the Puranas. You asked me, you asked me, so you, you raised a question that, you know, that the, uh, that the, the, the models should not just give some random prediction, they should be connected. And I'm showing you how it is stated in the Puranas. So it's not some random predictions being made, they're connected. And I'm actually telling you how they're connected, how they're stated in the Puranas. Now, these are statements in the Puranas. Just, just so to be, yeah, just to be clear, Sudas, when I say connected, I, I, I'm just, I, I mean that they're not detachable from each other. In other words, and what that means is that they're all entailed under the same theory. So I, okay, I don't how, want just how, to, would you, how would you detach P1 into different parts? I, can you give me an explanation? Well, well P one is just well, P one is just an is a is a, um is a um P one is just a, a an implication premise. It's just it's it's just that if these things are true, then this other thing is true. So, um, it's it's not. I'm I'm just not sure what the like. Here's the thing. Like, if it's the case that. Brahma's day lasts for this amount of time and he lives by night for that amount of time. And if his night is that amount of time, this many years ago, and the sun's lifetime is that, and Brahma's life cycle is not detachable um, from the fact that the solar system began and is dawn and dust or that, then the Puranas entails through unification that God exists. Like, um, well in, in yeah, this I'm model, in this one, you replace, you know, you had asked me to provide an, uh, an explanation for it being inextricably entangled. And that's what I presented you for. Now you're asking me the question, you're, you're raising the point that, hey, we can't establish P1 because, you know, P1 is, you know, you can't accept somebody having a lifetime of 8.6 for billion years. I accept it. But that's not what we're arguing right now. We are trying to present an, an case for things being entangled with each other, not necessarily things being provable. Because that's why I just said earlier that, that there are parts of this model which are unfalsifiable. So yes, there is no way that you can uh, empirically establish the Brahma lived for these many billion years. But as I said, that in the case of Einstein theory of general relativity, there is you know, parts to it, such as the gravity being a transformation of space and time, which cannot be empirically established. So like in this P1, P2, P3, P4, if you were to replace P1 by gravity being a transformation of space and time, it will be the same thing. You cannot you cannot establish it. Um, explain to me how P1 being replaced by gravity being a space transformation of space and time, how would you accept that versus accepting Brahma having this much lifetime? How are those two things different? Yeah, I'm just not, so in, in this formalization, I'm just trying to put into some valid inference what the uh, what the thing you're trying to say in natural language. So I'm just I'm just not clear that maybe I can steel man this and like make the argument stronger. I'm just trying to like see how I'm just trying to see how. Um, so what I'm trying to get here is how um, the existence of Brahma. Or the or any god is not detachable from the fact that well, premise five says the solar system began four point five six seven billion years ago, or any of these physical claims. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see why it's the case that if if the if those natural things are true, then there's some theory which also entails that. Um, there's some theory which also entails that that the god is true, that it's not that it's not detachable. Like I just want to know. What well, ultimately I'm trying to find find out is that why is it the case that the god claim is entailed um, from these other things, like from these on the theory from these other things? What what is what is non-detachable? And I'm trying to find an argument for that. So. I'm trying, and you've given me an argument, 
and I've formalized it. And it's a six premise argument. And I'm just not sure why I would accept premise five. And I'm not even sure if I would accept, I guess I can ask for clarity on some of this, but I'm not, I'm not really clear on if I would even accept premise one, because I can, I, I can accept that Brahma's day, or at least as, you know, as Brahma has been described in like the text or whatever that lasts for this amount of time. And I can grant that, you know, as that the sun's lifetime is 9.5 billion years. And I could grant that as Brahma is described, his life cycle is not detachable um, from the fact that the solar system began 4.56 billion years ago. And if, and I can grant that, you know, as, as he's described, his dawn and dusk are 0 0.6 billion years. Um, I mean, I guess if you say that he's not detachable from the solar system beginning 5.56 billion years ago, then I could, um, if you say he's not detachable from that, um, if that's a premise, then maybe you could try to get to that conclusion, premise one. But I guess then the major pushback would be on premise five. Like, what, what's the case to be made that Brahma's um, life cycle is not detachable from the fact that the solar system began 4.567 billion years ago? Like, what reason do I have to accept that? Okay, I think... Or, 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 any, of, or any of these things, for that matter. Like, what... No, I mean, I appreciate your honesty. Yeah. I think so many things. And let us pick it up from here next time, because I really, I really enjoy talking with you. Just being uh, such a uh, gentleman in uh, this debate, you know, helping me out with this proposition logical formulations. So I have to, uh, sorry, you have to go somewhere, but I really enjoyed having this discussion with you. Maybe we can pick it up again some other day uh, if Isaac, you know, is ready to organize another another such event. Um, but I have to go right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Okay. To Uh, I guess I can carry on for a bit. Uh, yeah, just so Detroit is asking if he can step in voice for a second, if if that's okay with Arjun. Sure. Arjun. Th uh, thank, thank you once again, Avi, and thank you, Isaac, for hosting this uh, discussion. No problem. Have a good one, Siddharth. Uh, sorry. I just had a quick question, and maybe I haven't really been listening that closely to the conversation, so I might be asking something that's already been answered. But, um, what, like, in, in premise one, um, when we're talking about something not being detachable from a theory or from some fact, um, it seems obvious that we would grant that, um, you know, the fact that God exists, or maybe certain facts about his life cycle or whatever, is not detachable from the theory present or presented in the Puranas, whatever. Um, but that, that doesn't hold, that doesn't entail the reverse, right? That, um, um, uh, that any theory regarding the sun or lifespan of the sun will have certain facts not detachable um, concerning God. I mean, that's like going the other direction that's not really entailed. So like, is he, and it seems like that second direction is sort of what's required by this argument, but I'm, I'm not quite sure why we would grant that. I'm sorry. So you're you're saying that uh, I'm just trying to understand what what point is being, is being made. Yeah, just 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 for my clarity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I didn't like if you if you recall where I asked um uh, kind of gave my understanding of detachability, right? So um, mm -hmm. if we have some theory, or or I'll just take a theory as a collection of statements, whatever. Um, some fact or posit is not detachable from that theory if that theory entails that fact, right? The, the truth of that yeah. theory requires the truth of that fact. And Correct. obviously, Correct. of course, um, whatever we take the, the theory of the Puranas to be, right, it's going to entail that God exists and it's going to entail all, all sorts of things, right? Uh, including these things about his life cycle, perhaps. Um, great. Uh, Brahma and what are other gods and demigods? Um, and so those things are going to be not detachable from that theory. Um, but that's not really what's stated in premise one, right? If that's all that was stated in premise one, then, then that would be fine. But here the detachability is, or undetachability, right, is going the other way, right? It's not like we have this theory in the Puranas that certain facts about 
God are not detachable from. But we have certain facts about the sun, right? Um, that certain facts about Brahma are not detachable from. I mean, just read verbatim, right? Brahma's life cycle is not detachable from the fact that the solar system began, blah, 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 blah. blah. So the fact that the solar system began is like our theory, T, right? And that is supposed to entail certain things about Brahma's life cycle if it is, in fact, not detachable. But then where's the entailment? Show that that thing is, in fact, entailed on that theory. I just I can't imagine you would be able to do that. Is that kind of clear? So you're saying that, like, okay, it's clear, like, on the, the on the Brahma theory, it's clear, like, okay, well, it's not on that theory. If that theory is true, then clearly Brahma is also true. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah. But that's but, not what's being said in premise one. It's going right, the other way. Um, okay, so then, so, and Brahma's life cycle is not detachable from the fact that the solar system began. Uh, oh, then, oh, yeah, it would be like Brahma. So the, 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 the facts, the predictions about the theory would be uh, the, the nature of Brahma's life cycle. And um, the fact that the solar system began 4.567 billion years ago. So, like okay, so, say. yeah, yeah. So, so there's two things here, I guess, right? Um, if, if the fact, yeah, so, so, um, one, one way to respond to what I just said is to say that, no, that's not where the, the statement doesn't end there. The, the, um, theory or fact that we're considering is a conjunction, right? The solar system began 4.567 billion years ago and his dawn and dust are 0 0.6 billion years. Um, okay. If that's the, you know, theory that we're considering and, um, the Brahma's life cycle is not detachable from that theory. It's entailed by it. Then that's true, of course. Um, but uh, who's, <laughs> uh, if, if that's what we're saying, then um, we can grant premise one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, well, yeah. So if, if I'm trying to think then, if we're granting that, then why would we grant? Um, so it depends. At that point, it was going to depend on how we're interpreting P two, three, and six. So, yeah. um, if two, three, and six are like ontologically committing, then I don't know why we would grant that they're true. But if it's just sort of a, a statement about the story, um, yeah, then then we could grant them. But the conclusion is not. Um, well, yeah, the, conclusion, the... the conclusion could even follow, right? We could even grant the conclusion um, in that, uh, well, if the, the Puranas are true, then God exists. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But yeah, like... why think that um, the Puranas are true? I don't think the argument is going to show that. I think what you're saying is you can do the reverse of what you're trying to do. You can work from... Uh, you know, the story in the Puranas about Brahma's life being accurate uh, to the universe being this age, but you can't work backwards from the universe being this age to the story in the Puranas being true. Is that what you're saying? Right. But uh, it depends on, yeah, so I was, I was going over like um, the different ways of interpreting that first premise. And if, if the theory that we're considering is a theory that one, this whole system began this many years ago and that, uh, you know, Brahma has these properties about his life cycle. Um, uh, that's our theory. Then um, there's going to be certain things uh, not detachable from that, um, including that, well, Brahma exists, right? Um, and so that's going to be fine as a, as a statement of P1, if that's what we want to say. Um, but the fact that the, the, the sun's lifetime is X, um, even if it's consistent with that theory, doesn't entail the truth of that theory. Um, and um, if the other premises are just stating the other posits of that theory, um, which are just going to be posits about Brahma, including that he exists, or at least requiring that he exists, I, I don't see why th those would be granted. And those are going to be premises two, three, and six. And also premise five. So, uh, so even if we give that interpretation premise one, the, the concern I had is going to be obviously an issue in premise five. Yeah. Um, because this, the fact that the solar system began 4.567 billion years ago doesn't at least logically entail, unless we have things with some other sort of entailment, that the uh, uh, 
the, the Brahmas has a, a particular life cycle that he's supposed to have, and or even that he exists. So, right. So, so yeah. unless we have I mean, another I did, sense of I detachment. Yeah, I, I, I like. I, I was trying. Uh, I tried to like formalize what was being said in the most charitable way I could, um, or at least I tried to do so. Um, so I mean, I mean, I'm also trying to understand. Um, I mean, it seems to me that, uh, I mean, premise, but all that said, I don't mind, I don't think there's anything problematic about the conclusion. In fact, in a way, premises two through six are sort of unnecessary. Um, I think it falls just from premise one. Um, yeah, it's superfluous. So uh, they're kind of superfluous. I don't, I'm not sure what they're adding. Um, unless we really want to say, unless their interpretation of the conclusion is not just that well, a, con a simple conditional, like if the Puranas are true, then God exists. But we want to say that the Puranas are true and God exists because of that or something like that. Well, you know, that's going to be a much stronger statement, um, which I'm not sure that that does follow. But even if it does, I, I think the two, three and six are going to be very questionable. And two, three, five and six are going to be very questionable. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure what uh, like how to um, I tried my best to formalize it. I'm not sure if um Maybe there was an inaccuracy in my formalization, but I, I don't think, I mean, I, I don't know if anyone got some different type of formalization from what was being said. Um, but given that this is the formalization, yeah, I mean, there's there's going to be a lot of issues. I, um, I suspect that they will want to, you know, amend it maybe. I mean, does it's the equivalent of spend time to go through those premises, especially the fifth premise. I, I think that's one. Yeah. Uh, given my understanding of the, non-detachability whatever stated above um i mean five is just obviously going to be false um I, yeah i don't know how to not a lot of things like that are going to be entailed by um, yeah. that a theory regarding the sun existing or beginning that many years ago yeah i mean if, if there's another time that we can I'm I'm happy to try if if there's any amendments that want to be done I'm happy to try to like you know to try to improve the argument or but I I mean as of now I just don't see a like I don't I don't see an inference that I would consider sound to like accept the conclusion that God exists at, at this point right so what what was the, just another question what, what was the significance of these numbers are they supposed to add up in some way to the no I I don't. I don't. I, they, well, they're supposed uh, to correspond with like. It's, supposed, it's kind of close. Nine point six, eight point six four plus point six is getting kind of close to nine point five. The point of those numbers is to show the extraordinary accuracy of those the numbers which are contained in the Puranas. Right, but the, it's supposed. To, it's, it's said to be extraordinarily accurate, um, in that eight point six four plus point six is pretty close to the scientifically estimated date of 9.5? Yeah, well, one way you could look at it uh, is that the, the scientific dates are converging on the Puranic dates because the, the scientific dates are, are constantly being updated. So it's not like it's the right. final word on how old the universe is. Uh, but okay. the fact that they're zoning in and getting closer and closer is, is, is pretty uncanny. And the, the degree to which they, you know, if you assume the scientific values are perfectly accurate, the degree to which the Puranic values add up to that is really uncanny. So, so but but we have to ask the, the follow-up question then. Does the, and I'm forgive my ignorance, but does the Puranas in fact predict from these numbers, right, that there's some is supposed to correspond to the lifespan of the of the actual sun. No, well, I, I, I like obviously th those numbers are in some sense brute. Like, you know, the, the the sun could have been a different age. You know, the Earth could have been a different age. The universe could have been a different age. The 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 partial annihilation or the partial extinction could have happened at a different time. Uh, so it's not that like they're logically entailed in any, in, you know, the kind of way that, you know, an object's falling at a certain speed is entailed. It's right. just so that the, that's where they happen to be. But the fact that the piranhas have knowledge of that is really uncanny. Well, but, but let me, let me kind of make clear my concern, right? Um, there's a lot of things you can do, you know, adding up numbers in different ways to get results that might correspond to interesting facts. But the question is, is the Puranas in fact predicting this number 
uh, as the lifespan of the sun. I mean, if it's just a number you can extract in some way that, that corresponds to that, it might just be an interesting coincidence. But why would we suppose that there's some genuine prediction or knowledge that's required to account for that? Uh, I mean, uh, so is what you're saying, like you can just take, you know, some set of data and just examine it and, you know, what do they say? Statisticians say that you, uh, your numbers will confess to anything if you torture them long enough. Is that right. the kind of point you're making? I mean, there's people who think that, uh, you know, biblical scriptures predict uh, um, Israel becoming a nation in 48 or something like that. You know, and the numbers can be Bible added code, up here. Right? Yeah, I mean, maybe those are more, uh, the number of steps are quite, um, extreme, whereas the number of steps here are, not, are fewer. But why I think that there's something like different going on, and that you're just finding interesting coincidences and putting numbers in a way to get to the sort of conclusions um, that you're looking for? Well, the the coincidences are so improbable that that you, it's not fair to just call them an, a coincidence. There's a there's a degree of improbability where where something can no longer just be shrugged off as a coincidence. That's why when somebody walks out of a casino with you know, eight hundred thousand dollars in winnings one night. The FBI gets called. Well, but how improbable is it though that um, with numbers uh, presented in the Puranas and some basic arithmetic, that you would be able to um, get numbers that bear some, you know, within ten, fifteen percent uh, resemblance to numbers of scientific significance? I, I think that's what. Well, I think it's quite that, high. I don't think. The, the data he showed shows that the accuracy of the age of the universe and, and the time of one of the partial distinct extinctions and so on are within like 0.3% accuracy or something. And the range that these values could fall in and the fact that there's three guesses, so you, it's exponential when you put the guesses together, you know, just like if somebody had three days in a row right. where they won a well, million dollars, it becomes all the more likely that they're cheating. So when you combine all that together, you get a, a, a probability of getting these values right just by guessing of uh, but that's, one in 10 to the 186th. Yeah, but that's not how you calculate the probabilities here, right? Um, you would calculate them that way if that was the target of those numbers as presented. But those numbers could have been <laughs> corresponding to uh, or... or um, made to be correlated with a wide number of things, right? Um, it's not as if that's the thing they had in mind when they presented these numbers. Because then, if uh, given that, and we just suppose that they have no further reason to, to think there's anything more than a guess, aside from the truth of the Puranas, whatever it is, uh, then you can maybe calculate the probability in that way. But that's yeah, not well, that's fair. It's like, not like just I... throwing some dice and then getting a number and being like, oh, let's find out if this is the birthday of someone famous. It's not that kind of thing because the piranhas actually say at this time there was a partial devastation, which in modern science terms trans out, tra translates to a partial extinction. And they, they verify that. So it, it, it's not this kind of ad hoc thing. It's, there's actually a direct correlation between what's being said in the piranhas and the numbers and what they're correlating to. Yeah. So in the, um, the example I was talking about was this one. And, and again, I'm not familiar with what is precisely said in the text and um, and so if there's something that says something more that can is, is more predictive of, of what um, where it's being correlated with, then sure, fair enough. I mean, we can discuss that. Um, I, I was taking it that these numbers aren't aren't really predicting in any meaningful sense what the lifespan of the sun is. It's just a number that happens to be quite close to what modern science predicts that it will be. Um, and in that case, um, since those numbers could have been uh, combined in different ways. I don't know. Maybe the difference is something significant. Um, and and then there's a lot of numbers that we uh, drop out of our, our physical theories that could be correlated with that. There's not really that it's correlated with one of them is not particularly surprising. Um, now, it might have been surprising that it was correlated with the one that was predicted to correlate with, and that would be significant. Um, but that's that's not what's being done here. Uh, that, at least that's what I was taking from from your response. All right. Well, but those I mean, other cases, those other cases might be better. I mean, if those, if that one about, sorry, if that one about um, uh, that might be reasonably expected to be predicting some sort of extinction event, 
And I'm kind of skeptical of that, but maybe it does. I'm not really familiar with the text. Um, that that's going to be going to be at least a little bit more improbable. Whether it's much more improbable is another question. All right. Well, I mean, where where I'm at right now is I, I'm just. I mean, I'm just without an, an inference that I find to be sound that um, gives me reason to believe God exists. So that's that's where I'm at now. Um, so I had, I had one more question, actually. And, and, yeah, sure. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, it's actually not a very big question, but it's something that's brought up near wasn't brought up near the beginning of this discussion that it's kind of an expression that I don't like um, when people talk about extraordinary claims. I generally don't know what that means, except to say an extraordinary claim is one for which we have like a low prior, right? One which, you yeah. know, given our current knowledge, we think is not likely to be true. Is that all that's meant by an extraordinary yeah, that's, claim? That's, that's really, that on a, it's just the Bayesian, yeah. Okay, then, yeah, that's fine. Um, and if well by extraordinary evidence, we mean something, you know, the kind of evidence given which... Uh, oh, wait, I, I should just clarify, because right? like, that's, that's not what I, that's how I was referring to that word. I, I wasn't the actual person who invoked that word. Um, right. So I'm not sure how they were using that word. That's how I interpreted it. Uh, well, with regards to the data, when we say the data is extraordinary, we mean that it's highly unlikely, you know, like if I were able to tell you the full contents of your pocket right now, that would be pretty extraordinary because it's like, well, that's pretty detailed information, right? Well, yeah, so, so, but so the way I'm interpreting that is, um, I mean, uh, I would be, I think it's highly, more very likely not true that you would be able to correctly predict that. Right? And so given that you do, if, if you do, um, it's an extraordinary prediction. And, that, and that's, that's all I mean for it to be an extraordinary prediction. All right, well, I mean, I, I, like I said before, so I, at this point, so I've tried an inductive formalization, I've tried an abductive formalization, and I'm just not clear. I'm not clear on a valid inference that's being made that is, that I would consider also sound with the conclusion that God exists. But um, I mean, at this point, I mean, it seems to be getting a bit late. If you want to continue, we can continue a little bit. And if you think you can, you know, tidy up the the formalizations, if you think you can make it valid and sound. Um, yeah, I mean, well, to... the way I would go about it is, is, like I was saying before, an inference of the best hypothesis. So you were pressing me that you're you're assuming God exists in order to say it's divine knowledge, but like I, there's a there's a very specific claim about God or about this knowledge, uh, this body of knowledge which is being made, and then once you accept that, then you can get the rest of the information. Just like, you know, that once you accept something's an owner's manual, then you've got detailed information about the product. But to accept it as an owner's manual you don't need to go through circular reasoning you can just you know figure out that a bunch of the stuff that it says is true and then you've got a, a good reason to conclude that it's an owner's manual well i mean the issue the the issue i was pointing out is when i was asking you what the formalization to that inference of the best hypothesis was your first premise was that the Puranas are divinely revealed by God, uh, that was that they were divinely revealed knowledge. And by divinely revealed knowledge, I asked you if that means revealed by God. And you said yes. And then the conclusion of that argument was supposed to be God exists. Now that's going to be de facto well, and circular. Because uh, in the first premise, uh, God exists is embedded within the first premise. If by revealed by God, we mean by God that exists. Um, no, the, God the, the, exists the is in the first being... premise. The Puranas being divinely real, real knowledge is a conclusion, not a premise. It's the premise of a follow-up argument, oh, okay, which gives okay. you the so, rest of the details. Okay, so if you want the... Well, but then we need an argument for it, right? Because like, if the Puranas... Okay, so if that's fine. We can say, okay, so the conclusion is the Puranas... So conclusion... Puranas are divinely revealed knowledge by God. Uh, but, then, but then we need a formalized argument for that, right? We, we, we need some sort of inference. Uh, so, like, what's the first premise then? Like, what's the, what's the argument? Uh, well, yeah, I'm not sure what, what the best order to say it in would, would be, but the the basic idea is the Puranas have uh, knowledge that could not be had by any other method other than divine revelation or something like that. So the, the okay, accuracy I think I of them. Yeah, like I, I could try to formulate that. Like, if the 
if the if the piranhas um, have knowledge that could only be known if uh, that can only be known uh, by God, you can say by God, God, then uh, the Puranas, then the Puranas are divinely revealed knowledge by God. Okay, so then the Puranas are divinely revealed knowledge by God. And then premise two would be the Puranas have knowledge that can only be known by God. And then premise three, and, and then uh, conclusion would be uh, the Puranas are divinely revealed knowledge by God. Uh, so yeah, I, that sounds about right. Okay, so if, so this is your inference. So this your inference is premise one. If the Puranas have knowledge that could only be known by God, then the Puranas are divinely revealed knowledge, being revealed by meaning revealed by God. Um, premise two: the Puranas have knowledge that can only be known by God, and then the conclusion is the Puranas are divinely revealed knowledge, which is revealed by God. Is that would that be your inference? So, sorry, I had to put my phone out. Yeah, we can go work with that. All right. So then what's so, the argument for P2 then? We, we, we would just need an R. I just don't see a reason to accept the second premise. So that the, the probability of just knowing that stuff by just guessing all, all three guesses together is 1 in 10 to the 186. And I can't see what other method there would have been for, to know that. Uh, yeah, I think I think what he's trying to say is that it, not that it couldn't, that it just would be wouldn't be likely if I just steal him in the size act. Um, yeah, but I, I what I want to know is what's the probability? Um, what's the what's the probability of it not? Um, what's the argument that it, it would be like a incredibly unlikely probability of being known by any individual other than God? What I, I want to argue, like so, I want so let's try to make a formalization with the conclusion: the piranhas have knowledge that can only be known by God. So the conclusion here would be that premise in question, which is premise two. So that premise, the piranhas that can only and by only I would be like I can probabilistically. So that would be our conclusion. The Puranas have knowledge that can only probabilistically be known by God. Um, and by probabilistic, I just mean that like the probability that the knowledge in the Puranas uh, could have could uh, be there um, without God is incredibly, incredibly low. So I could just write that out then. Like the the knowledge in the Puranas the knowledge in the Puranas um, have a incredibly low probability of being there without God. Something like that? Is that like the conclusion? The knowledge? Uh, the yeah, something like that but, sounds right. Okay. Okay, but then what's? So, but then let's have an argument for that. Then, like, what's the what? what what's well, the we can rule out that it could could have been knowledge that they just guessed, right? Like, you know, you can't write a Harry Potter novel that's just fiction and have these kind of sorry, I got a little kids around, um, and have knowledge like that that happens to be scientifically accurate just by chance, right? Okay, so is that the first premise? So premise one is so premise one. I guess um, guessing can be ruled out. So the knowledge. Okay, so the knowledge in the piranhas. The knowledge in piranhas did not come from a guess, or from a guess. Okay, is there another premise? Uh, sorry, I'm watching, watching my two-year-old now. Um, so, yeah, we rule out guesses. 
so the only other thing that would be left of how that knowledge can be there is through scientific methods. And uh, I don't know, like, I think that's unlikely. You want to, would you like to make an argument that whoever wrote the Puranas could have had all that knowledge through uh, emp empirical methods? Well, it's not a, it's not my burden to do so, right? I'm not, I'm I'm taking the agnostic position in the debate, so um, it would be. Well, I'm I'm, to... I'm, well, I'm it... saying we need yeah. an explanation for this data, and I have an explanation, and you don't. Therefore, I don't see how what's... that pushes me off agnosticism, though, because we already discussed that. Um, you know, explanations. The fact that I may not have an explanation doesn't necessarily mean that I need uh, to de facto go to any explanation that's there simply because it's the only explanation. Um, but the point here is that, like, you've made a conclusion. Like, you there's the conclusion that you've asserted, which is the knowledge and the promise have an incredibly low probability of being there without God. Now, premise one is the knowledge in the Puranas did not come from a guess. Premise two um, is the knowledge could not come from uh, scientific, uh, from individuals with the, uh, scientific endeavors or scientific processes, individuals from individuals invoking invoking scientific methodology. You can say it like that, invoking. Okay. Um, like, is this, is this where we are right now? Like premise one, the knowledge of the Puranas, the knowledge in the Puranas did not come from guests. Yes. Premise two, the knowledge cannot come from individuals and over scientific methodology. Conclusion, the knowledge in the Puranas have an incredibly low probability of being there without God. Like, is that, is that what uh, we are? Yeah, well, we, we've, we've ruled out every other method of this knowledge being there. So all we're left with is, is divine revelation as a way of this knowledge being known. Wait, what? Like there could be all sorts of other ways. Like how do we how do we rule out all the other possibilities? Well, we're doing an inference to the best hypothesis here. If you want to offer another way, that's fine. But if you don't have another way, then we're we're reasonable in accepting the best explanation currently on offer. Wait, but are we just wait wait we we are okay. First of all, like okay, I'm not sure how this conclusion follows from the premises. So that's one. We that move and and the other thing is. The whole idea that if you have an explanation and I don't, I need to accept your explanation. We already addressed this twice. Like that, that we, we are like, well, again, I, like the, the mere fact that you have an explanation for something and I don't doesn't mean that I need to adopt your explanation. So what you were trying to do is that you're, I take it to be what you're trying to do here is you're trying to make an argument for that. Your explanation being the most likely. That's what we're trying to do. Um, we're trying to make an argument that all the other, and I take it to be the process you're taking here is you're trying to rule out the other possibilities, or you're trying to get, um, you're trying to get all the other possibilities uh, to be some very low probability, or 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 not, or, or the probability of zero. But I just so so, I, so so number one, like this move that inference to the best explanation. I have an explanation that's the best explanation, so you have to accept it. I mean, that just doesn't work at all. Um, now, if you want to make the case that your explanation is not only the best explanation available, but is actually a good explanation, and therefore I should accept it, that's a different type of argument. Well, you're welcome to make an argument that none of the explanations are any good, and you'd, you'd do that, you know, if you're going to accept well, I, the first I, two explanations, that's not my that are... Yeah, that's just not my, that's not my burden. It's not I'm saying, my, I'm saying I have got an explanation. If you want to say I'm, it's not, that's something. No, I, I'm not sure right? that, I'm just, not, no, no, I'm not saying that it's not. I'm, I'm saying I'm just not sure that it is. I'm agnostic if it's a good explanation or not. Remember, I'm taking the agnostic position in the debate. So it's your burden to show me that it's a good explanation. It's not up to me to show you that it's a bad explanation. Yeah, I think this is getting into a, a realm of um, like unreasonable agnosticism. Like when an explanation is offered and you want to say it's not, explana not a good explanation, you're, you're taking a burden of proof and saying it's not a good explanation. Well, just to be clear, I'm not saying it's not a good explanation. I'm saying that I'm agnostic if it's a good explanation and you have the burden to show me that it is a good explanation. But then all you're now, doing I don't is telling see... me about the contents of your mind. You're not telling me anything about the real world or the logical state of my argument. 
Um, I'm just doing my best to formalize your argument, and I am. Uh, I take it to be that you're making the claim I'm agnostic. You have a burden of proof to um, establish the explanation you're to, to establish the claim that you're trying to make. You're saying you have an inference of the best explanation, and I'm just asking why your explanation is good. That's all. Yeah, there still has to be some reason why the explanation is not good, and the only thing I could think nope. of is the why? prior probability of God's existing being, uh, you know. Rule considered to be low, and I can't see how that could be established other than circular reasoning. Yeah, if we're I'm arguing for God's existence, we can't just assume God doesn't exist, and therefore say any explanation no, of God's existence. Again, is bad. I'm a, yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I think, I think, look, you're so remember, I'm taking the agnostic position of the debate, so I'm not saying that your explanation is bad or anything, I'm just want a reason to accept your explanation. And if you're saying that the reason I have to explain to accept your explanation is good, then convince me that it's good or convince me that it's a high probability of being true. If you're saying that I should accept the explanation because it's the only one that's there and de facto the best because it's all, in virtue of being the only one that's there, then I don't see why that would be a reason to accept it. If you're saying it, I should accept because it's the best explanation and what makes it the best explanation is that it's a good, i.e. high probability of being true explanation, then I'm trying to get an argument for that. That's all. What what what's the issue? Well, we don't need. Sorry. What's the? What's the, issue the data that that we're we're using is is really extraordinary. So, uh, the probability prior probability of God's existing doesn't need to be high because we've got extraordinary data. So what what would be the inference there? So like, what are we adding to this to these premises? So I have the knowledge Mother. in the Quran did not come from a guess. The knowledge did not come from individuals invoking scientific methodology. Is there another conclude uh, premise there, or, or are we going to the conclusion the knowledge in the promise have an incredibly low probability of being there without God? Like what what other premise is there? I don't. I really don't see what's wrong with that argument, other than having a bias against using God as an explanation. Oh well, I can tell you what's wrong with the argument. It's not formally. Uh, it's not formally valid. It's an inference to the best hypothesis, you know. It, it, yeah, but if these, not those a, can still be if not A or B, B, then C. Not A, not B. Therefore C. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. So I can actually formalize. Okay. So actually, I no, I can formalize that. So I can say either, either, um, knowledge of the Paramas came from a guess. Or knowledge of the paramas uh, of the knowledge came from individuals invoking scientific methodology, <laughs> or knowledge came from God. So this I can actually make a, va a valid, a deductively a valid argument from. Um, uh, or the knowledge of the promise uh, came from God. So, so this I can actually do. So that from what you said to me in natural language, I actually can formalize that into something valid. So either. Uh, the knowledge in the Puranas in the Puranas came from a guess, or knowledge in the or the knowledge in the Puranas um, or the knowledge in the Puranas came from individuals invoking scientific methodology. Came from or the knowledge in the Puranas came from God, came from God, right? So now premise two would be knowledge in the Puranas did not come from a guess. And then premise three would be the knowledge in the Puranas uh, did not come from individuals invoking scientific methodology. So let me just edit that. Premise three. And then we have a conclusion, and I'll tidy this up in a second. Um, the knowledge in the Puranas came from God.
Okay, so what I have is um, premise one. So what I have here is that premise one is either the knowledge in the Puranas come from a guess or the knowledge in the promise come from individuals invoking scientific methodology or the knowledge in the promise came from God. Premise two, the knowledge in the promise did not come from a guess. Premise three, knowledge in the promise did not come from individuals invoking scientific methodology. And then the conclusion is that the knowledge in the Puranas came from Puranas came from God. Is that like is that the the inference? Arjun? Hello? Can anyone Sorry, hear I me? Sorry, I forgot to do push the talk thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that mm -hmm. sounds right. Yep. All right. So then and then what's the uh I, we need an argument for P1 then. Like what what's the argument that those are the only three possibilities? Well, I mean, do you want to offer another possibility? No, it's not a. Oh wow, Isaac, you are a great. Pro damn, Isaac. Oh damn, that is a great prediction. Okay, so um, yeah, so it's not my burden to do that, right? So it's your burden to to substantiate P one. Uh, it's not my burden to uh, falsify it. Remember, I'm agnostic. I mean, how do I possibly substantiate that? I've given three possible methods of it being known. You want me to, like, it's it's a negative claim, right? Like, you well, yeah, you can, there's no unicorns you can on the negatives. moon or something? Yeah, you can prove negatives. One way of proving a negative would be establishing a contradiction of a third po of a fourth possibility. Um, that would yeah, be but there's way. always going to be a possibility that there's another explanation, but we're just dealing with the mm -hmm. ones that we have. Yeah, I mean, if you have an issue, um, well, if there's always a possibility that you have an explanation, then P1 is false then. It's an inference and to the best hypothesis. It's, it's working with the wait, explanations but, which we have. Yeah, I understand. But I've asked you to formalize your inference to the best hypothesis. This is what you've given me. And premise one you think is clearly false based on what you've told me, which you told me that there's always going to be another possibility, which means premise one is false. Well, all you've got to do is, is, is modify it a little bit to, to, to acknowledge the fact that it's an inference to the best hypothesis. But I think all you're right. really splitting hairs there. It's, I've, I've said all the way through that it's an inference to the best hypothesis, and we all know how inferences to the best hypothesis work. Yeah, but, I, but I've tried my best to formalize your inference to the best hypothesis, and so far we haven't been getting any formally sound or any formally sound uh, inference. Well, you just re reword it to say, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for the best explanation here. These are the three explanations. It's not any of these two. Therefore, this one is the best explanation. Yeah, I just don't see. Um, I'm I, well again. So, so there's two things now. Now we're going back to the the thing we addressed three times. So, even um, so, if you want to say that these are just the three best explanations, I'm not. I'm not sure why we would accept T1. Maybe there's another explanation that's better. Um, I'm also not. Yeah, but we don't why. have that explanation. An inference to the best explanation works with the explanations which are on hand. There's oh, always, okay. in any inference to the best hypothesis, you know, there could be a scientist in 100 years who comes up with a better explanation. That's true of every single scientific theory to date. Well, then we have, then if you just want to say that the available um, explanations on hand, that there's only three of them. Um, it would just not be clear why we would need the we we should accept the best of the three, because um, all three could be bad, could be garbage explanations. I have to go. Wow. Soon. I mean, we could pick this up at a, a later time because it's getting pretty late where I am. Um, yeah, that's but, fine. I I just I just find that the way you're going about it where agnostically is just sort of like, you know, like the, the in ancient Greece, the the sophists, all they did would do is poke holes in other people's worldview and they wouldn't stand for something. You're like, if you want to say that it's not a good explanation, you have to ar offer an argument. If you want to say no, you're I'm just not, not convinced, so Arjun, and all I'm you're so doing so is telling me about the contents of your brain yeah, and you're not Arjun, telling me you're anything just, about the logical this point, state of the argument. At this point, I'm sorry, but no, at this point you're not tracking because I've said this like four times now. So I'm not saying that. So I'm not, it's the burden is not on me, nor have I said that your explanation is garbage. I'm just saying that is, for all I know, your explanation could be garbage. I just would like an inference that why it's not. So you, you acknowledge that you could have three explanations and all of which are nonsense, all of which are garbage explanations, and you can have the best of the garbage. I'm not saying that's what it, yours is necessarily, but I would just need, in order for me to have a reason to accept your explanation, I would need in some sort of reason to believe that your explanation is a good explanation, and not just the best of the garbage explanation. 
Yeah, I mean, I think with this kind of skepticism, like I could tell you your birthday, you know, intimate details about your life, the complete contents of your wallet, and you'd still be like, I'm just not willing to accept that you being psychic is the best explanation for this data because we could only have bad explanations. Even if you don't have an alternative explanation, there's a certain point where the, the, you know, the amount of predictions I was able to make is so uncanny that it's like, okay, this guy must be psychic, even though you might have a prior probability of me being psychic that was low, right? Okay, so what what I need here, so and I'm help, happy to help you formalize this, Arjun, but what I need is a inference that this is not just the best explanation, but a good explanation. And so I'm, I'm happy to try to formalize that for you. Um, but so far, every time we've tried to formalize it, we've gotten either a invalid argument or a unsound argument. Or we can try I mean, all one you're more doing time. is sitting there and saying, I don't think it's a good explanation or you need to show it's a good explanation. But like, say with the psychic example, you know, like I'm not, I'm not making any supernatural claims about psychic abilities, but it's just a hypothetical, like, would that not be good, good grounds for assuming I was psych for concluding I was psychic? Were I able to make intimate predictions and you know detailed predictions and stuff and tell you your credit card number and so on yeah i i don't know if it would be a, a good i mean i guess i'd have to think about the the specific predictions i'm not sure if it would be a, a um a good uh, explanation to say that you're psychic but regardless I, we would need either way we whatever inference we're making to to come to the conclusion that you're trying to get to if it's explanatory we need some type of inference to get us to the to to get us to reason to accept that explanation that being a good explanation an explanation maybe in, you could say it has certain explanatory virtues you could say that um you, you could say that it has a, a high probability of being the case and you can try to make your case through that through through certain inductive accounts or abductive and an abductive account for this explanation with it with virtues but i mean I, I don't. I just don't see where that inference is here. I don't see what inference is being brought to the table to say that your explanation has a high probability of being true, or your explanation is the explanation that is a good one. That is that has the, the explanatory virtues. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm happy to try to formalize uh, the inference. I'm happy to try to help, but I'm just letting you know that's you know. Nothing you've brought to the table so far gets me there. I mean, I don't know what else to say. That the, the data is uncannily, like, it's extraordinary data, and I've offered an explanation, and you can't tell me why it's not a good explanation. So, like, well, that's not that's not my burden. Yeah, that's 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 not my burden. I, I don't have to tell you why it's not a good explanation. You're the one that's arguing for. That being a good explanation, I'm agnostic. Yeah, but you being agnostic is a, is the state of your brain. It's not. It's nothing about the logical state of my argument. Yeah, but it's the like, burden. Of, the that's fine. That the burden you're allowed to be agnostic, but if that that doesn't tell us anything about whether I've made a good case or not. If you want to say I yeah, haven't made a good case, then you've got a burden of proof. Well, I just haven't. Heard, uh, yeah, I'm just not convinced that I have a reason to accept that you have a. Um, your explanation is a good one. And if you think you can give me a reason that your explanation is a good one, I'd like to hear the answer. Yeah, again, you're just telling me about the state of your, your conscious, your, your brain. You're not, you're not telling me anything about the state of my argument. Like, you're, you're yeah, welcome well, to be a skeptic. Well, like, well, I, well, I, I could say the well, same well, thing about it, evidence of, for other things. I could no, say I, I'm not convinced that Einstein's so I actually general theory of relativity the is a good your explanation. Yeah, I've told you. Okay, so just to be clear, this I've I've not been. Yeah, in terms of the state of your argument, um, you've present. We tried formalizing one argument that you had that was uh, formally invalid. Then we made it formally valid, but there was no argument for P one. So the state of your argument is that it's unsound. Unless now, if you could you could make another argument, that's fine. We can help formalize another argument. I mean, it's unsound means argument. you need to show one of the premises is false. So which premise are you saying is false? Or or at least we have sorry. At least we have no reason to believe it's sound. Yeah. So, so sound. So P one in this argument, I have no reason to believe that P one is true. I mean, we've Why only got three possible ex explanations. One. I've I've made this case. Nobody's offered a fourth explanation. So okay, but the fact that okay, but here's the thing: the fact that we can't offer a fourth explanation doesn't mean an explanation is not there. 
Yeah, but that's, why that's would true I, of every the, single scientific theory to date. What, what I'm saying is we only have three explanations. If you want to say that's not the case, then you need to show a fourth explanation. I'm not talking why? about whether or not a fourth explanation exists Wait, out there in the ether listen. that we're yet to uh, discover. Listen. I'm saying the only ones we've discovered are these three. Yeah, so what? Okay, so just to be clear, here was the argument that we formalized. Why should I accept the first premise? The first premise being that these are the only three explanations which we currently have on hand. Oh, no, that wasn't the first premise. The first premise was either the knowledge in the Puranas come from a guess or the knowledge in the Puranas come from a come from God. But as I said before, it's an inference yeah. to the best hypothesis. We're working with the explanations we've currently got. So, do you think so that what you want to do is say that, that premise, all... or should we accept a different premise? Or does premise one need to be rewritten? I've said Just from be the clear, beginning that it's an inference to the best now. hypothesis, which uh, always I don't means, hear you answering I mean, the you're question. Just, I'll repeat you're just the question. sitting here now. I've said that it's an inference Should to the best hypothesis this entire premise time. premise one or not? The premise is I that, you know, the argument is that it's an inference to the best hypothesis. I've said this all the way through. What I'm saying is okay. we have these three explanations. This is, okay, so if we're going to so go Arjun, with the best explanation, the, we need to go the, with... Arjun, the inference to the best hypothesis, We I tried to formalize it. You signed off on this argument. Now, for premise one, in the argument you signed off of, do you think I should accept premise one being true? And if so, why? So you, you split hairs over it, and then I pointed out that actually what we need to say is the only explanations we have are these three. So the best explanation that we have is going to be one of these three. It's not A, it's not B, okay, so you, therefore so you the best want explanation we have premise? is C. So, so, so you don't agree with premise one as it's written. You want it to be rewritten. Is that correct? Yeah, sure. Re rewrite it. But uh, again, you're splitting hairs. I've said all the way through that it's an inference to the best hypothesis. So this isn't like, it's not that I'm editing okay. anything. What's, so let, I just want to know, like, what do you, do, let me just ask you this. Like, do you think that if we have, do you think if we have the best of, a, the best hypothesis, that means we should accept it? Like, if, if a hypothesis is the best one available that we have on hand, does, it, does that give us reason to, like accept that hypothesis well you you at least place more faith in that explanation than any of the others well that's like, not what i asked right that that well that wasn't that's was not that's not what the question i asked so the question i asked was if you have a hypothesis that's the best uh one does that always give you reason to accept that hypothesis that's the question i asked if, or for if, so if you have multiple explanations, you always have, if there is a best of those multiple explanations, do you, does that always give you reason to accept uh, the best explanation there? Well, I mean, that depends on your degree of confidence that there's only those explanations available and so on. Cool. Okay, so is that a no or a yes? Like what? what like... So just, well, I mean, so we, we always right. formulate our worldview by just going with the current best explanation. Science does it all the time, you know. And if, if you want to say all the explanations are crap, that's also an explanation. That's that. There's also okay, a burden so of proof in saying just, that none of the so explanations just, are I'm good. I'm not appreciating a clear answer, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask it again. So, do you think that if an explanation is the best explanation of the available explanations on hand? Do you think that gives us reason to accept that explanation? Yes or no? Oh, well, I think in this case, we have got grounds for at least place, placing some amount of confidence in it because the data is so extraordinary. I, I think just saying, let's leave it unexplained isn't, that isn't satisfying or so acceptable. So I'm just going to repeat the question pretty because uncanny. I, I don't appreciate an answer to the question I asked. So the question I asked was, do you think that in all cases, do you think that if we have multiple explanations and one of those explanations is the best of the multiple explanations we have on hand do you think that gives us reason to accept that explanation yes or no yeah I've, uh, at least as a placeholder until we get a better explanation we should accept that one okay so if so just so we're clear if i see a phenomena i can't explain i have three explanations available at on hand at the time one is that the cookie monster did it. One is that the tooth fairy did it. 
and one is that my grandma rose from the dead and did it. I yeah, but conclude God's that the not analogous to the tooth fairy. Like the the God, God's as an answer to philosophical problems. God's something people come to believe in our old wait, age. There's there's many symmetry between God. I don't see how that's God like wait. And the tooth so fairy I just want to know. If, I just want to know if in that scenario I should accept one of those three explanations. Because one of them is no, I'm not accepting the to the tooth fairy or the cookie monster as acceptable explanations, and I, I don't think there's an analogy to be drawn. I don't see how that's gods. relevant, whether there's an analogy to God or not. Because you said that I always have reason to accept it as a placeholder, right? So now well, I'm talking about prior case, probabilities here. So the prior probability of the cookie monster is extremely different from the prior probability I don't see how that's of God's relevant. existing. Yeah, I don't see how that's relevant because what you said was that I should always have reason to take the best explanation as a placeholder and accept it. The, the, the prior probability no. affects the, um, whether it's a good explanation or not. So because the cookie monster has yeah, a lot of prior probability, again. it's not a good because explanation. You me, because you told me that I should accept yeah. as a placeholder the best explanation that's on hand. Now, I gave you a scenario, a hypothetical, where I have three explanations. All seem pretty bad. But and I'm showing why the cookie monster true. is not a good explanation. When we say best explanation, yeah, I didn't then, ask. Then I didn't ask we if they were good explanations. We can talk about the criteria of what makes something a good explanation. Yeah, so the cookie monster and the so tooth fairy. So we're dodging now. So what I asked you was that. So you you told me that you should accept the best explanation as yeah, a Yeah, I'm working holder. with that criteria. The best explanation. Now, if that criteria is true, if that criteria is true. If I have three explanations for a phenomena, one is the cookie monster did it, one is the uh, tooth fairy did it, and the third is my grandma resurrected from the dead and did it, should I accept one of those explanations as a placeholder? Well, I think in this case, you can say none of those are good explanations because of the prior probability. It's not answering my question. So should I accept, so is, is that a no? Is that a no? Well, if you can show that none of the explanations are good, then you shouldn't accept them. I don't see why okay. we should even accept if, that even God if one of them even if one of them is the best even if okay to be clear even if one of those explanations are the best explanation at, available at the time do you think I should not accept any of those three explanations as a placeholder yes or no yeah Anyway, I don't like the way you're, okay, you're, you're so splitting you think hairs I should over the not formalizations any, of the arguments. That you're, okay, so now you're so now doing me over things explain. that I've already yeah, said so earlier in the, the discussion. So if you were paying attention to what I said earlier, you wouldn't be treating me like this. I, I've said earlier you that you said. can reject explanations. You can reject a, a pile of explanations, even the best one, when you can establish that all of the explanations are bad. Yeah, so but I'm you saying said, in the case of God me, and the Puranic information that God's existence is not a bad explanation. Okay. You're, you're not. So I asked you if if you have the best of multiple explanations, if that always gives you a reason to accept. OK, so let's add to that. that now, you said yes, that, that yes. And so now I a asked you in this hypothetical, if I should not accept any of the three, you said you should not accept any of the three. So that's actually a country. So so or you, if you saying it doesn't give me a reason. It doesn't give me a reason to accept any of the three. If you say that, you're in a contradiction because it is and is not the case that the best explanation gives you reason to accept it as a placeholder in all cases. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not super practiced on this hyper formulations of arguments. I'm more into prose and so on. So, yeah, I, you know, I can explain the to you. I can explain closer. the contradiction that you're in if you'd like. So, no, so you, you just allow me to reformulate my position because I, I'm not in the practice of hyperformulizing arguments. I think it's dry and boring and unnecessary because we can just talk in prose and understand each other. So like I, I've, I've said well, that if you can establish well, the that all the explanations are bad earlier in the discussion me. that you can reject them. So like, let, let's just add that in. So yeah. provided none of the, so provided you don't just have a bad, you don't know that you have a, a bad lot of explanations, then you have no reason to accept that. Sure, but you I mean, appreciate, but you appreciate what you've told me in this conversation leads you to a contradiction. If you, if you're, if you're willing to sign off on and to agree with that, then fine. We can, we can go back. I'm happy with you going back and revising your previous statements. I'm just pointing out yeah, to you so, that based yeah. on what you've answered my how you've answered my questions, you, you've led yourself into a logical contradiction. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm doing this on my feet here. I, I don't really usually get into this hyperformulations, and it's not really something I'm a fan of. So if we can just, like, work with, you know, adjusting it in ways that makes it consistent, then we, we can sure. bring no, in listen, the point hey, that you listen, can reject a bad lot of explanations. Yeah, yeah. 
if if you're willing to if you're willing to understand and acknowledge that what you've said previously leads to a logical contradiction, I'm happy to work to go. But we can go back and you can amend your previous statements if you think. Well, it's we're just adding, modifying it a, a little bit. It's not like a, a, we're throwing the whole thing out. We're just adding. Okay, we can modify it. Whatever. You don't you only have bad explanations. Yeah, totally, that's yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. I'm just pointing out to you based on what you've said. You're in a contradiction. If you want to go and amend that, that's fine. If we if we are were you in agreement. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's let's okay. move on. So, okay, so that's a yes. So that's so that's a yes. You've you've got you, you based on your previous statements. You're in a contradiction. We can we can um, we can acknowledge that you've contradicted yourself, and we can amend what you've previously said to le to to be consistent. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So then, what is your what is, is so now my, my question again would be then if you have multiple explanations should you you know does that give you reason in all cases to accept the best of those multiple explanations yes or no i mean provided you don't only have bad explanations then it's fine and accepting the explanations you currently have science does it all the is time and no? they find out their explanation was wrong so is that a no Sorry, say the question again. If you have multiple explanations, does and it, does that give you reason in all cases to accept the best of those multiple explanations? Yes or no? I mean, no, obviously I've I've like Okay. What Okay, I really so don't clearly, understand the point of this. Like I've said that, that provided like I've already said something that entails that. Why why do you need to drill on this? Like Okay, so but then the reason well the reason I want this clear from you is because in the in the inference that you've given me um was that you said that these were the three explanations on hand and i'm just not clear that that makes um any of these explanations on hand uh a explanation that i should accept so so it could the be the case the that any of these it could be the case that any of these explanations are just bad explanations and i would want a reason to think that they're not so i don't see god as being a bad explanation in this case because the data is extraordinary and i don't see any reason to consider the prior probability of god's existence to be low i mean that god so answers philosophical problems god most people who ever lived and died believe so what's the inference so what's the inference that the explanation you're providing is a good explanation We can start with the first premise. I I don't know if you're you're not coming through. Maybe it's the push to talk, but we can start with premise one. I, so I guess the conclusion would be conclusion, the God explanation is a good explanation. It's a good explanation that we should accept, right? Like that would be the conclusion, right? So conclusion, the God explanation is a good explanation that we should accept, right? So, so what's the argument for that? Arjun? Hello? I'll just am, I, am I coming through? Like, can... Yeah, I'll just pipe up because there's a technical problem. So we can't, we can't actually hear you, Arjun. Are you still there? Um, test, one, two, three. You can try leaving the room and coming back in if your uh, mic isn't working. Um, hello, Arjuna. Have we got you there? Arjuna... Try pinging him, maybe. Um, Arjuna, are you there? Hello, 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 hello. I'll message him on Facebook, too. Uh, we can't hear you. Oh, uh, OK. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if you can see General, but yeah, he's, he's saying he can't hear anything, so I'm just telling him to leave and rejoin. Okay, there he goes. Um, re rejoin now. Okay. Okay, I don't know what happened. Loud and clear. No, it's all good. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying is that what we need then is an, uh, an inference for this conclusion, which is the God explanation is a good explanation that we should accept. Right? So what, what, what might premise one look like for that? Like what would, what would the argument be? Sorry. Are you, are you there, Arjun? Is that working? I don't... You're, you're cutting out. Just make sure to hold down the button while you're talking there, Arjuna, like you were doing before. And if it cuts out, just leave and rejoin. It would be good. Can you guys hear me? Yep, loud and clear. I can hear you now, yeah. Yeah, I don't see any reason to consider the prior probability of God's existence to be low. It's like, you know, it's kind of like a historical claim in one sense, God's existence, because it's, it's something that there's only one of, and we have, you know, you know, there's not like we can do multiple iterations and measure or something like that. So there's just either God existing or God not existing. And I know people make these silly arguments from like inconsistent revelation and whatnot, that there's, there could be millions of gods and so on, like the argument against uh, Pascal's wager and so on. But really it's just a question of God existing or not existing. And then from there, a question of what's God like, is it like the description of this religion or the description of that religion and so on. So um, I think, so is you know, premise we, one... we could, uh, so is premise Fine one. Binary. There is no reason. So is premise one. There is no reason to consider the prior probability of God's existence to be low. Like, is that premise yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. Now, is yeah. there another premise, or is there just is that the only premise? Uh, and the the data is so extraordinary that uh, it it. it uh, matches or outweighs any kind of any the prior probability you might assign to God's existence were you to make it low. Depending how low you were to make it, obviously. So the data is so, ex the data, what would the data, so, okay, so the data, um, the, I'm trying to, I'm trying to formalize like a, okay, so the data, let's see what I, how I can do this charitably. Um, the data entailed by God's existence. Can I say it like that? By I mean, the, the data and the piranhas, which we're, tr we're trying to explain. Okay. So the data, data entailed by the piranhas being true. Um, can I, is that a way we can phrase it? By... I mean, the, 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 the data and the piranhas, which has been. The data and because because uh, the way the way I'm going to do it right now it's not going to be valid. I'm trying to I'm trying to form be charitable and formalize in the way that it's formally valid. So the data and the the data and the piranhas. I did not write that correctly. Um, So the data. So that's the point. The we have a low prior probability and we have a, a high, uh, you know, we have extraordinary data to explain. So those two things together make. Um, so I just want to know what so the God, second premise is. God is a good explanation for the data. Yeah. So the second premise is the data and the piranhas are so extraordinary that what? Uh, I'm not sure what the best way to articulate that in a formal argument would be, but um, that it that they they are um,
that's the okay. type of extraordinary yeah, we'll that I'm looking at. Point to so the Dan the Piranhas are so extraordinary that they are, um, that they have a have a very uh, low probability. That, um, well, maybe that they justify uh, invoking explanations that have low prior probabilities. The data and the in the the data and the piranhas are so extraordinary that they make the God explanation a good explanation that we should accept. Should we put it that way? No, I, we're just talking about um, okay. how to work around prior probabilities. So one, we're saying we have no reason to assign a low prior probability to God's existence. Two, we're saying the data and the the scientific accuracies and the piranhas are so extraordinary oh, increase, that I they justify like this, increase increase the po the, the posterior so okay so um increase um so we can say posterior um posterior probability um uh okay so so think we can say that so we have a prior and then we have our posterior so the data and the piranhas increase our posterior probability um okay so increase our posterior probability of the god explanation such that okay so, uh, yeah, substantially that works, yeah. substantially I'll try it like that okay and then i will say okay and so i'll say premise 1 premise 1 is if if there's no reason to consider the the prior probability of God, of God's existence to be low and the data and the piranhas increase the posterior probability of God's explanation substantially then the God explanation okay so the probability of God explanation uh, Okay, I'll just say explanation. The God of God, of the God, the God. I think I'll have this God explanation to be low, and the data and the parts increase posterior probability of the God explanation substantially. Then the God explanation is a good explanation. We accept. Okay, so how about this? How about premise one, if there is no reason to consider the prior probability of God explanation to be low and the data and the piranhas increase the posterior probability of the God explanation substantially, then the God explanation is a good explanation we should accept. Premise one, there is no reason to consider the prior probability of God's existence to be low. Premise two, the data and the piranhas increase posterior probability of God's existence uh, of the God explanation substantially. And see the conclusion of the God explanation is a good explanation that we should accept. Is that is that your inference? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. All right. So then what's the um so so what's the argument for uh what would be the argument for P two? I just I don't see why I would accept that. Arjun, are you there? Sorry, I forgot about the push. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. So, what's the argument for P3? In... Sorry, let me let me just premise one. I sorry, I mislabeled the premises. Premise two, premise three. Okay. okay. So I it's have the, the data in the piranhas, not the data and the piranhas, or another way we could say it is the scientific accuracies found on the piranhas. 
but that, that's just details. That's um, fine. So that's what fine. was the question? To, yeah, the data in the Piranhas. That's fine. In the yeah, what's what's the argument for premise three? Uh, I mean, the the first two premises are the argument. You combine those two two together. You have a low probability of God existing, and you have data which increases, which uh, makes it re re reasonable. Yeah, but what's the argument for premise three? Sorry, so is we have an argument. So do we have an argument for the third premise here? Because I don't see the, a reason. The first, the first two premises constitute the argument. So, when, wait. I so mean, just to be clear, the first two premises is the argument for the third premise. Yeah, the third premise is the conclusion of the first two. So when when you have, I mean, a good explanation is something which either has a low prior probability uh, or which is no, an explanation for something. Okay, so well, this this is what you're saying. Are you saying the first two premises are the argument for the third premise? Meaning, this premise one, if there's no reason to accept to consider the prior probability of God explanation to be low, and the data in the piranhas increase the posterior probability of the God explanation substantially, then the God explanation is a good explanation. So we should accept premise two. There is no reason to the probability the prior probability of God's existence to be low. Conclusion: the data in piranhas increases the posterior probability of God's uh, explanation substantially. Because that doesn't form follow. Um, that does not follow, um, and that actually is not a valid argument. I mean, how do you define a good explanation? I, I would have thought you'd define a good explanation as something that explains the data and which has a prior probability and a posterior probability which match up to make it within the realm of being sensible or, or reasonable. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I, so we can work on. We can have the same operating definition. I'm what, what's being called into question is just that third premise now and i when i asked you what the argument for the third premise is you said the argument is the first two premises is the argument for the third premise but that's not actually a valid argument sorry well how like do you the, define a good explanation the same way you just did that if if it has a if it has a high probability of being true and with Bayesian, so that argument establishes that, that that the the prior probability of God combined with the posterior probability, which the argument can work with or, or establishes, combined together to make God a good explanation. Yeah, but the the point I called into question is that the it that it is the case that the data of the piranhas in actually do increase the posterior probability so, of God. So what I, what I what I really meant by the the scientific accuracies in the piranha is that it's such extraordinary data that it justifies invoking right. explanations Look, which have a low prior Arjun, probability. Arjun, so I'm asking you for an argument for premise three. You told me that the argument for premise three are the first two premises of the argument. That means yeah. that the problem with that is that's not a valid argument. Right? This is what you get. I'm posting in general. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm speaking in prose three. here, and 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 like, you're you're writing it down. I, I'm not super trained in hyper formulations of logic, and I, I frankly don't find it that valuable. Like, I, I we we agree well, on a definition of a good explanation. I, I've explained right. why I think God is a good explanation in this right. case. Can you just respond to what I've said in plain English? Yeah, because we because we well, well, I think that formalizing um, is a incredibly valuable tool because when um, the the waters are muddied with those prose and with those natural languages. It's very valuable to put the argument into a formalized language, and because it's very easy to see where the argument fails. And in this case, it seems to fail on premise three, because it's not really clear that you have an argument for premise three, and the argument that you provided was not valid. You said it was from the first two premises. Yeah, you're really just splitting gears now. We've, we've agreed on a definition of what makes a good explanation. You're not contesting that the low have an argument probability of God's three? existence is low, and you're not contesting that the piranhas, uh, like, I mean, I can try and formulate it, you know, premise one, the prior probability of God's existence is two, premise two, the piranhas, the scientific accuracies in the piranhas justify having explanations which have a low prior probability. Therefore, God is a good explanation because Arjun, the, the, the premise I'm contesting is that the data in the piranhas increase the posterior probability of God, the God explanation substantially. 
that's the premise I'm asking for an argument for. Right. So now you're not saying it's an invalid argument. Now you're just contesting one of the premises. That's a very well. Well, thing. the argument. Well, well, the the well. I asked you for an argument for that premise, and you gave me an argument that was invalid. The argument you gave me was is that the first two premises form the argument for premise three. Well, that, pre that's, isn't premise that three that God's a good explanation? You're, you're saying you're contesting premise two, which is the one about the scientific. So okay, uh, Arjun, are, are you reading latest. general? Here, are, are you reading general so we can just read this together? Um, because I don't. Because if you're not reading while we're like, so premise one, so premise one is if there is no reason to consider the prior probability of God explanation to be low and the data in the Puranas, it says and, but we can correct it to, to in, increase the posture probability of the God explanation substantially, um, then the God explanation is a good explanation we should accept. Premise two is there is no reason to consider the prior probability of God's existence to be low. Premise three is the data in the Puranas increase the posterior probability of God's existence substantially. I mean, sorry, the God oh, sorry, I thought you were challenging the conclusion. Yeah, so, yeah. The, uh, the, the... so the argument for premise three is what we're looking for. Now, you understand that when you gave me an argument for premise three being Yeah, sorry, I thought I was giving you an three. argument for the conclusion. So okay, I, I cool. didn't realize how you'd written it out. I, I don't see why I don't understand what premise one is doing. Isn't premise one just the whole argument stated as one premise? Well, well no, premise one, pre premise, premise one is the implication. Right. Wouldn't that normally go as the conclusion? Mm, I mean, you can have that premise as a conclusion, but that's not what you're trying to show. You're not trying to show if this is the case, then, you know, God exists. You're trying to show that God exists, right? Like if, if this, if you're not trying to show that if this is the case, then um then the god explanation is good you're trying to the ultimate thing you're trying to show presumably is that the god explanation is good right yeah okay yeah, I, I get what you're saying um so yeah so i sorry i thought you were talking about the conclusion when you were challenging me so we were talking past each other so the reason for thinking the data and the piranhas increases the prior probability of god's existence or the way i've been stating it is uh justifies invoking explanations that have a low prior probability is because the the, the the data is so accurate in, in, in such an uncanny way, like the, the the degree to which it's accurate, the chance of getting all three of those right by chance is one in 10 to the 186. So it's really uncannily accurate. All right. So then, so, so we would need an argument. So what I would need is an argument that, so I can try to formalize that. So it's saying like, okay, um, if, like if the, probability of this being true without God is incredibly low, then the data in the Puranas increase the posterior probability of the God explanation substantially. The probability of these things happening without God is very is extremely low. Conclusion, the data in the Puranas increase the posterior probability of the God explanation substantially, right? Um, I mean, I I'm, not sure that, I'm not sure if that's how I'd word it. It's, it's just that the, you know, it's an uncannily accurate knowledge which begs for an explanation. It's like, you know, if you find a crashed UFO, you, you can't just say, well, what you know, you're trying to tell me it's aliens. Like, and, and you can't just say, well, your explanation of aliens, I don't think it's a good explanation. It's like that the evidence you have in, in the form of a crashed UFO is uncanny. So the evidence we so, have in so, the form of these scientific accuracies is uncanny. Yeah, so what might, so premise one, that might be if the data in the, Piranhas. Um, one moment. If the data in the piranhas are, um, <clears throat> what was it? Uncanny? Um, yeah, I don't know if that's the best word, but I think it does the job. You know, just like finding a U crashed UFO, would, you could say, what, you know, think uncanny is un a good like word. Highly, highly unlikely without without the God explanation being true. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if the, like, let, let, another way we could put it is, yeah, you could use the unlikely thing. Like, you know, if, if the piranhas were just written by a bunch of people who took mushrooms or LSD or whatever, uh, it's highly unlikely that they'd have this kind of accurate information. Okay. So I have, if the data in the piranhas are highly unlikely uh, to be there, um, to be there without the God explanation being true, then the data in the piranhas 
increase the posterior probability of the God explanation substantially. Now, premise two is going to be the data in the Puranas are highly unlikely to be there without the God explanation being true. And the conclusion we're going to have is that the data in the Puranas increase the posterior probability of the God explanation substantially. Okay. So is this what we have now? If the premise one, if the data in the Puranas are highly unlikely to be there without the God explanation being true, then the data in the Puranas increase the posterior probability of the God explanation substantially. Premise two, the data in the Puranas are highly unlikely to be there without the God explanation being true. Conclusion, the data in the Puranas increase the posterior probability of the God explanation substantially. Is, is that what we have? Yeah, that works. All right, so what's the argument for premise two? Because I don't see any reason why uh, I should. Well, I mean, do we agree that the data is highly, like, you know, extremely scientifically accurate and, you know, couldn't have been there just by, by guesswork? Um, I'm not sure how that, even if I agree to that, how that gets me to premise two. So uh, we, we need an argument. I just need an argument for premise two. So what we need is an I argument and the conclusion. So the I conclusion think this comes back to our, our central contention about. Yeah, whether it's it's fine to just have no explanation or not. Like the 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 data is uncanny and highly unlikely to be there by guesswork and I can't see any way. So we're just coming back to the the original Wait, so argument. Do you have the... so do you have an argument for premise two? Well, I think it just comes back back to the the original thing. So we're saying it's highly unlikely to be there. It's the scientific accuracy is uncanny, so it begs for an explanation. That's kind of the right? point. So, the, so the statement that it's highly unlikely to be there without the God explanation being true, that's just restating the premise. But do we have like an argument for the premise? Well, it's the, again, it comes down to the data. Like the, the argument for the premise would be in the fact that the data is uncanny. So knowing the age of the universe, the time of one of the partial extinctions, and the age of the earth, uh, the sun, or the age, is the age of the earth, is um it's pretty uncanny information to have and, and it's yeah, a, the accuracy of it is, is high so like how else would that knowledge be there is the question and because it's it's so accurate and and so uncanny it, it justifies having explanations which have a low prior probability okay so is the so, so what's the argument that the data in the piranhas are highly unlikely to be there without the god explanation being true like I want, I want like, so premise one would be what? Well, again, it comes down to like the psychic example. If I could tell you the full contents of your wallet and, you know, other personal details that I couldn't have known by any other method, you could say, well, you could just invoke the same kind of skepticism. Well, yeah, I'm not convinced that you're psychic. I, I, you know, the, the way you're arguing, I could give any kind of information. You know, I could tell you your first girlfriend's name, the full contents of your wallet, wallet what you had for breakfast. You know, I'm not sure what, what, what are the examples i could give but i think i'm making the point and you could just say yeah i'm still not convinced by the psychic hypothesis like i'm just happy to have no explanation i'm, I'm agnostic here convince me that you're psychic do, do you understand yeah, I'm, not, so I'm not appreciating an argument for the the second premise in, in that analogy um so i i, I still need because i don't see how um the data in the piranhas are highly unlikely to be there without the god explanation being true just like I need well, an argument I, for the predictions of the psychic to be highly unlikely to be there without the psychic explanation being true. Well, you rule out the other explanations. And once you've done that, like Randy Carlson oh, okay. well, went that's out fine. Okay. and established so then, that there were other explanations for me. Yeah, yeah, but then but that's, but that's that's we, already, we already went through that pathway then, right? Now, we're, now we, we already went through the ruling out. The, we rule out the guess explanation. We ruled out... Um, uh, we had the, 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 now we're going back to the previous inference that we had. Um, so yeah, so what like explanation? The, I think the psychic analogy is, is really, um, really works for this. So, you know, like if I just said, told you like, you know, what you had for breakfast or something, you know, may, maybe I'm just spying on you through your webcam and I could see you eating your breakfast in front of your computer, right? Like there might be explanations for meager so, guesses like that. But I just, if I the guesses to, get to a certain... Back, but... 
but but we you when you said rule out the other explanation so we already did right we had this inference that you already gave right we're going seems like we're back to this circle here right we're back to this well with the, with the psychic case you, you said that you ha you'd be happy to accept i i was psychic provided we'd ruled out all the other explanations no, but well, again if, you know with oh, the psychic if we thing, rule if I just... out all the other explanations uh that are possible yeah sure i agree um but and if you could do that with with uh with with this i'd be fine sure um, so what what so what's the argument that all the other possibilities are are um, ruled out? I mean, I don't know if you can ever rule out every other possibility. There's always the hypothetical possibility of another explanation being found later. Okay, so what what's the argument that um, the possibility uh, the explanation that is correct is uh, an expl is not an ex well, so what's the what's the argument against the explanation being correct being one of those explanations? So I say it again. Yeah, you said that it's always it's always possible for there to be another explanation, and I just don't that we don't know of, and I just don't see why I would believe that that those that grouping of possibilities, those explanations that I don't know of, aren't the correct explanations. Like, why would I not believe that? Well, like, I mean, with going with the psychic example, like, you know, suppose I were to have extraordinary predictions that I that were attributed to psychic ability, and, you know, we'd gone through all the other explanations that we could think of. Uh, uh, there's a certain point where it's like, okay, this guy must be psychic, right? Do, would, would you agree with that? I'm not sure. I'd have to get clarity on what you mean by psychic and um, how it could, how it would tie into the, the nature and the specifics of the predictions that are being made. Um, but well, like I, like I gave an example of saying what you had for breakfast. Like if I if I were to say I knew what you had for breakfast, you know, maybe I just snuck into your house and rummaged through your rubbish bin and guessed what you had for breakfast based on the contents of your rubbish bin, right? That wouldn't be extraordinary. Yeah, yeah so I, I don't. Yeah, I would just. I I'm not sure what the argument would be that there, there wouldn't be another explanation that, um, would be the correct one. So with the psychic example, that when you when you get yeah, I mean, accurate, maybe there could be. I don't know. I, I'm ag again. I'm agnostic. I'm just all I'm saying is that you you don't seem to have provided me. Um, it doesn't seem like you've provided me with any uh, inference that provides me with any of these um, any any reason to believe that that's the correct explanation. Now I, I do have to go. I'm sorry. I do have to go now. But I, yeah, I, 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 I heard have the last word. Too, but... yeah. But just quickly, like with the psychic thing, like, yeah, again, if I was to guess what you had for breakfast, that wouldn't be very impressive. And, you know, even if you had no explanation of how I could have got that, there's, it's just not that impressive, right? But if I were to make highly inaccurate predictions, like, you know, tell you what your first pet was called and tell you things you'd told friends that you'd never told anyone else and they'd never told out anyone else and tell you your credit card numbers and the full contents of your bank account and like the full contents of your wallet down to the last penny and whatnot, then that would be pretty uncanny. And if we could rule out all other explanations, then calling me psychic would be the best explanation and would be a good explanation given the extraordinary sure nature of the data. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that would be the exp the best explanation that the individual was psychic. Uh, there, there may be many other explanations that may be correct. And, um, but but in any case, yeah, but, and, um, and the thought experiment, I'm saying we rule all those out. Yeah. So in, in, anyway, so yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that would be the best explanation. In any case, look, here's the bottom line: where I'm at, where I'm at is. Um, so a couple of things. So I don't see, um, I don't see, a, like, I'm just at the same place I started. Like I'm agnostic. I don't see any reason to, uh, accept that, um, the God explanation is the best explanation for the data that we have available. I don't, and I don't see, um, I, I definitely don't see a reason to accept an explanation where all the explanations could be bad explanations. I definitely don't see, um, um, I definitely don't see it to be that the three explanations provided are the only explanations. And if there are a possibility of other explanations, I don't see why I would have a reason to believe one of the explanations that we do have should be taken up as the better explanation than a possible explanation that we are not aware of. And we can take this up another time where you actually have a, an inference for those things or any of those things, um, I'd be happy. But right now, I just don't see a sound inference for it.
Above yeah, anyway, let, let, I don't think we're, we're going to get anywhere with this. You're, you're just invoking a, a hyper amount of skepticism. Like, I, like oh, no, I think, I'm just, like I think I'm just invoking a, a basic amount of skepticism for, uh, uh, for, the, for the claim that's been provided, which is just uh, per substantiate the argument for your claim. That's pretty, that's pretty simple. I mean, that just hasn't been done. Yeah, anyway, I've, I've given plenty of examples. Like at the psychic example, if I were to guess all that stuff and, and you were to say, I don't think you're psychic, then you're just being unreasonable. Well, now you're just repeating yourself. So again, like we haven't we haven't had a sound inference for the for the thing that we're trying to substantiate. But that's all I really have to say. If you want the last one, I can give you the last one. Right. Well, that's, that's fine. fine. Let's finish it. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, guys, thanks for popping by the debate. I know Siddharth wants to do another at some point, so you know we can maybe set that up. Arjuna, if you want to be there, you're welcome to also. And uh, yeah, have a good night, everybody. Cool. Just, good night. Uh, just, just